Hi, this is David Oman with House at the End of the Drive.com. You're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Who were the real ancient Egyptians? What is it about ancient Egypt that captivates us all? The critically acclaimed series Magical Egypt is back with all new episodes. Let Chance Gardner and company take you on another adventure through Magical Egypt in the new series Magical Egypt 2. Magical Egypt 2 attempts a forensic reconstruction of the science of the ancients through a study of ancient aesthetics. Also, the best researchers and authors in the field like John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Laird Scranton, Robert Duvall, Lon Mal Duquette, Aaron Sheik, and more join together to explore the topics of the esoteric and the hidden messages of the ancient Egyptians. Just go to MagicalEgypt.com right now and put in the code word FRINGE and get 10% off any download or order, including the groundbreaking original Magical Egypt series, as well as the new episodes in Magical Egypt 2. Also, check out the great work and the companion series at MagicalEgypt.com. Click the banner on the Fringe FM or go to MagicalEgypt.com and use the code word FRINGE and get 10% off your order today while it lasts. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find us on Amazon or go to faststartdiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, we will include our number one rated appetite suppressant spray free with your order. Whatever your diet plans are, start with us at faststartdiet.com. And use promo code POWERSAVE. Live for three hours every Saturday night. It's a show that engages the mind, makes you think, and maybe even challenge what you think you know. Hi, I'm Jeremy Scott of Into the Parabnormal, where we talk about topics that are anything but mainstream, somewhere between abnormal and paranormal. Bring an open mind and join us for Into the Parabnormal, live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. This is Paranormal News. I'm John Jeter. What a week it's been at NASA. Opportunity is officially no more. I have positive confirmation of a safe landing. We're seeing it on the LTP. The Mars rover has been put to rest after more than a thousand attempts to communicate with it following a planet-wide dust storm that covered Opportunity's solar panels last June. Engineers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory made one final attempt to revive it. JPL Director Mike Watkins reflects on the mission. Spirit and Opportunity may be gone, but they leave us a legacy. And that's a legacy of a new paradigm for solar system exploration. A robotic geologist on Mars and an integrated science and engineering operations team here on Earth all set out together on a mission of discovery. They didn't know what they would find. They didn't know which direction they would go, sometimes from one day to the next. Uh, And they made it work. And they made it work longer uh, than any of us thought possible by both brilliant scientific deduction of where to go and brilliant engineering to keep the rovers alive. Opportunity was only designed to last 90 days in the Martian atmosphere and travel the length of 11 football fields, but vastly surpassed all expectations, living 15 years and traveling over 28 miles before arriving at Perseverance Valley, its final resting spot. NASA also unveiled plans to explore the origins of our universe and how common the ingredients for life in our galaxy's planetary systems may be. Sphere X is targeted to launch in 2023 on a two-year, $242 million mission to gather data on more than 300 million galaxies and 100 million stars in our own Milky Way. 
It will survey the sky in both optical and near-infrared light. Read these stories and more at ParanormalRadio.com. I'm John Jeter, and this is Paranormal News. is lighting the void it is wednesday night and the moon is beginning its wane here in the beautiful natural state on this february the 20th on into the 21st we are live on ktok digital broadcasting the fringe fm that website is the fringe.fm and our website for this show is lighting the void.com make sure you follow us on social media facebook twitter youtube all that stuff give us a like and follow tonight we're going to be talking about discerning the truth on several subjects we're going to go down the list actually here with one of my favorite people in the world ryan gable conspiracy ufos the occult the paranormal hauntings and much much more it's important that we discuss these things because it is a problem uh discerning the truth trying to get to the truth the reason why we know these things is because that's what's on everybody's mind not to mention that's what blows up my email box too so We kind of tapped into this when we talked about navigating the astral realm, but we're going to dig deeper. And I can't think of anybody to dig deeper with than Ryan Gable. You know, I want to give a quick shout out to those people that have supported the show and have donated to the show. Um, And people that are, you know, getting the gear and stuff because it really helps, right? So I'll just say your first name real quick. Thank you so much to Julia, Trent, Barbara, Curtis, Larry, Gregory, Jennifer, Eric, Joseph, Crow, Roger, Tyler, Randolph, Mary, Spiral C. Tarot, Chuck, Genevieve, Travis, and uh, there's a few more here, but I've ran out of room. Uh, but yeah, so those are the people that actually really keep the show going besides you guys that share the show as well. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And the newsletter, I'm going to try to get it out by the end of this week, which you're going to get some free ebooks, also an inside look to the studio, and some other recommendations I have myself. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you know who Ryan is. Ryan is our late night host. Uh, he is the show host of the late night talk show, The Secret Teachings, which airs every weeknight here on the Fringe FM at midnight Pacific. But he's also the author of Occult Arcana, Food Philosophy, and The Technological Elixir. Black Goo Transhumanism and Invoking AI, which is my favorite book that he has. And he's been on Ground Zero a few times. He was just on the Kev Baker show today. So Ryan is starting to stir things up, I would say. And that's good because we had a big talk. Uh, I remember, Ryan, if you remember before that you kind of came over to the Fringe FM that I remember telling you this, like, man, this is your time. And this isn't something that you wanted to hear. You're like, I don't know, man, I've been doing this for years. I've heard this before. Uh, I keep getting bumped off networks, 
but I'm just going to keep doing my thing. But I really think, man, people are starting to pick up your message. Uh, it's time for some abrasive truth. Uh, even when people don't like certain things you say or whatever, to me, that doesn't matter, man. It's all about getting the message out. And so I think that uh, you do that really well. And I'm glad you're here. Thanks, Joe. I'm glad to be here as always. I love the Fringe FM, and I mean that in a very sincere way. You gave me an opportunity to do something that other networks at the time didn't want me to do. And when I was actually on Kev Baker today, Kev Baker was reading my my bio that I had sent him that's on the website. And I, I listened to him go through the different networks that I've been on. And I thought, Jesus Christ, I've been kicked off of that many networks. He went through like <laughs> WBRK and then CBS and then Dark Matter and then L and M <laughs> and now I'm at the fringe FM. I just I just I, I, I can't believe that I've been kicked off of three solid networks. The other one was kind of a mutual thing at CBS. But that really doesn't have anything to do with me as a person necessarily. No. It just has to do with the information and that could affect any of you. I mean, Joe, you've been in situations where you have a conversation with a friend or a family member and they don't want anything to do with it and they can't respect your opinion, but they expect you to respect their opinion. Yeah, yeah, and and not to mention that we run into a real problem when you've got the audience. For the most part, the audience that I know is a group of uh, seekers that are really trying to find out the truth of things. That's that's really all they're trying to do. And um, what happens is is they get they get a lot of messages that I believe are done for effect, and and they're also done in uh, in complete. Uh, I don't want to say bullshit because it's, but I just said it. So yeah, complete bullshit messages, uh, just to be sold things. And they're all like more and more and more and more people are getting tired of it. And when I'm, I remember talking to you, I was like, you know, usually when a host comes around and they've been, they've had several relationships and they've been booted off several networks and all of this different stuff from my experience, which isn't that very long. My experience is, is that they're the common denominator of a problem. But that's my business head thinking. But you are the exception. The reason why you got booted off all these networks is because, I mean, it's kind of like people can't handle the real truth. It's tough because when when real truth gets spoken, it speaks to all of us. It speaks to all of our faults. It speaks to all of our, all of our good stuff about us, too. And we don't want to hear these things about ourselves. We'd rather talk about... Uh, the aliens that might be invading and stuff like that, which they may be, who knows, but we don't want to hear about the real truth about our faults and what's really the cause of all of the bad effects in the world. And, but we want it to change. So I always found that funny. We want everything to change. We want to get the real truth out. But when it comes to cause and effect, we don't mind talking about the effect all night long. But when we start talking about the cause, you know, that tends to touch people the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of us want the magic pill. And wouldn't that be great if a magic pill could just solve everything, if AI could just solve all the world's problems, if all of those problems are actually problems. We're told things are problems when they're not necessarily problems. The world is not overpopulated. That's a fact. It's overcrowded. There's a huge difference. But we've been conditioned to believe that overcrowded means overpopulated and vice versa. And so logically we think that over population means overcrowding and so it makes sense when we have that confirmation bias of being in a big city and rush hour traffic and we think wow this planet's overpopulated it's the conditioning of our perception to accept reality as we are told it is whether that is from a in politics a left leaning or a right wing a right leaning right wing or a down the center independent or constitutional or whatever the political association might be from that perspective from a religious perspective from an atheistic perspective what i call cults religions are cults politics is a cult everything is a cult even people that follow my radio show your radio show if anybody listening has a a sports team that they like to follow i do yeah and that's that's all a cult it's not a bad thing necessarily joe but I think the issue is when we're in a cult and when we've invested our energy in something, we start to identify with the cult and with the leader of that cult. And so if somebody else says, hey, your leader is wrong, we take that as an offense against us. Hey, your 
belief system is wrong here and here. I respect other things you say, but I think that you're wrong about this particular point. Well, they take that as a personal attack. We all tend to do it, and it's that cult. I call it cult recruiting. We're always trying to recruit people to our cult, and we believe that we're right. And so our sense of morality typically is based on what our belief system is. And so anybody who disagrees with us, then they're morally, or they're rather immoral, they're morally wrong. We're right. And we all do that within our own cults. If you branch out to very delusional states of mind where people become very angry and aggressive and violent, if you disagree with them, that takes the cult mentality to another level. And then you start to get into the legitimate Jim Jones style cults when we think about cult. And we now see a lot of that, unfortunately, in the radio world. And we see a lot of that in the so-called communities that we have with the paranormal or with UFOs. And it's always been there for sure. But the more and more people are able to capitalize on this, more and more of us are interested in, the, in these things. And we don't discern, we don't use good judgment to determine what might or might not be true. Then there are some that can run wild with exaggerated claims and made up things, made up stories, and they can rip a lot of people off. And they're not always selling a product. A lot of times they're just selling an idea or they're selling themselves and they're trying to grow their own ego and they're using your energy to do it. So that's just a little bit, I would say, of what it means to discern the truth, being aware of these things. We all do it. I'm involved too. I, I, I have a sports team that I like to, I like to watch hockey. Who is that, by the way? The Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm from Tampa Bay, Florida, so I've always liked uh, the hockey team there. So you I would say it. you're a lightning uh, in the lightning cult. I'm in a Tampa lightning Bay. cult. Okay. I'm in a hockey cult. I love. I just love hockey in general. Any league, major, minor. So I'm in the hockey cult. But I'm not going to defend hockey over other sports. If somebody says, "Well, football's better," I don't care to argue with with, with you. If if that makes any sense, I just like hockey. Period. Yeah. And that's 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 the difference. So the first topic I want to talk about in discerning the truth is UFOs, right? This is the big one. This is what a lot of people listen for. They're they're into the idea that aliens from another planet or another dimension are coming here uh, and have always been coming here. Now, uh, there's a, I mean, we can talk about this for a little bit, actually. There's a lot of problems uh, discerning the truth about that. Number one, our beliefs, right? Now, I believe that aliens have been here whether i don't know how long if they've always been here or whatever but i believe that they visited this planet that they could still be visiting this planet but i i kind of get the impression based on my experience which is something i know to be true that it's not as frequent as a lot of people would like to think right because in my experience which is something that we talk about our experiences our truth that a lot of things that are pointed at and called ufos are not really ufos a lot of the time sometimes they're venus sometimes they're airplanes sometimes they're drones sometimes they're satellites sometimes they're satellites um that are reflecting the moon and and look they're beaming up but it's really just a satellite and but every now and then we really see like i've really seen one before but that's not what we're being sold and I know for a fact that that this community wants the truth about this subject. So it has to be vital that we learn how to discern what's true and what's not when it comes to ufology. That's a really great point. You summed it up very well, Joe. That is what we find everywhere. We find that in ufology. We find that in the paranormal. How many ghost shows can you watch on TV where you see them go into a a house, they've got the night vision on. I think 99% of those are a joke anyway, but you go into a house, you've got the night vision on, and you start banging around, and everything that you hear is a, it's a ghost, it's a demon, something like that. And then that translates into real life. Art mimics reality, reality mimics art. And then people start to think, because they heard a noise in their house, that that they're possessed by a demon. I, I, I can't tell you how many people have told me and not they're not bad people. They're just I'm just saying people in general, just so many people over the years have told me that they have they've experienced demonic possession or they've they've uh, they've experienced some type of possession or they've had some type of um, entity in their home. And I'm not discounting that, but I don't think demonic possession is that frequent that it's so frequent. Every 
second person I talk to has been possessed by a demon. And that's just another example, just like with ufology. Again, you made a really great point. In a majority of cases, it is something that's very easily identifiable. In some other cases, it's not as identifiable, but there is an explanation. I mean, there always is an explanation. Even if it's unidentifiable, that's part of an explanation. But some of the things that we can't identify, and if we believe the military in those cases that they can't identify it either, it's not one of their craft. And if it's not a a, a human-made craft, it's not some other country, we're dealing with something that might be otherworldly. What does that mean? I don't know. We have to really define things, and that's part of the problem that that I I like to address on my show, The Secret Teachings, I like to address the definitions generally of certain words because if we were just to base our our belief system of whether or not aliens are real off of how we define a UFO, and that is broken down into a very polarized black and white, do you believe in UFOs? I do believe in UFOs, or I don't believe in UFOs. Well, I'm not going to say I do or don't believe because if you ask me if I believe in that, I need to know what you think a UFO is because you might think a UFO is exactly what Joe just described. You might think all UFOs are satellites, airlines, and reflections of lights and Venus. They might not even, someone that asks that question might not even consider the possibility that they are alien spaceships or yeah. that they are exotic craft. So I need to know what you know. So that's what I like to do. I like to counter the question. Do you believe in God? How do you define God? And I'm not saying that to be a devil's advocate. I, I'm just seriously, that's what I'm selling. I'm selling the idea that push the boundary, ask the question. That's all that I care that people do, and that's all that I try to do myself. Well, like last night, we had Sue Walker and Reverend White Otter on who— uh, I heard you know, that. Yeah, they claim to be uh, speaking to aliens, the Ponte, and they've been on several shows, right? The reason why I respect this story more than others— and it's up to all of us to decide what's true about it and what's not is that they gave a free download and a very super cheap, affordable book. They're really not trying to push the book. I mean, but that talks about a close encounters of the fifth kind, how to do it, how to, you know, how to go through all the processes. So in other words, instead of selling us a story with a huge backstory and, making us some a uh, part of some big alliance or something like that. What they've initially done is, is they said, okay, this is what our experience is. This is what's happened with these beings and entities. This is how we've contacted them. They wrote a book about it. They've got a free download about it. And they said, look, we're not here to tell you if it's true or not, but if you want to try it, here you go. And this is how you do it. And I don't know why that's so hard for, that to happen in all of these aspects, right? When it comes to UFOs or whatever. And there's sure there's going to be people that don't believe that story. Uh, there's people that are going to be making up their mind about it, but they see, that's the beauty of it, right? That's what we need to get back to. Um, I think, and when it comes to UFOs, the reason why that I endorse UFO seekers and Tim Doyle and, and stuff so much is because they're out in the field almost all the time really digging in to find out what this stuff is. And just about, I would say 80% of everything they find is a military operation for the most part, but they have the cool part about this though, is this is my whole point, Ryan, when you really care about the truth and finding it, they actually have ran across something that is unexplainable and paranormal. And I know it to be real. So it makes the information that we receive from these people that are better at telling the truth and providing the truth better, if that makes any sense, more reliable. Just like I listen to your show to me because it's more reliable. Makes perfect sense, Joe. And I think another great example of that is something that's very, well, in my view, it's popular because I've been covering this for a while and it's very mysterious. The cases of these mysterious booms that have been heard all over the world specifically in the United States, where I have a very large stack of cases, the most recent stories out of North Carolina and out of Tucson, Arizona, where several booms were reported back on February 5th, and I think the other was February 11th. And in these cases, it seems like, because I've been paying attention to this, this is why I think this, that they are becoming more frequent. And maybe that's because I'm paying more attention to them, or maybe it is because I'm paying more attention to them mixed with the fact that other people are recognizing this now. And there are cases where someone hears a a car backfire or they hear a gunshot 
basically they're looking for the sound. They're looking to feel a mysterious boom. So they report anything. And then a lot of these mysterious booms, I don't think it's happening now, but as this becomes more popular, a large number of these cases probably will be easily explainable as something like, you know, a a truck driving down your street or maybe it's, again, a car backfiring or somebody setting a firework off. But that doesn't dismiss the very credible cases. And it's kind of like when you look at the official military records for UFOs, like we know about things like Project Blue Book. At the end of those types of official projects, which to a lot of people like myself, it kind of seems stale to talk about that, but others have never even heard of Blue Book. So if you look at something like a Project Blue Book, I think the number was 10, I think it was about 10% of those cases officially, according to the United States government, they could not identify those 10%. So those are the 10% that I'm concerned about. And unfortunately, because of propaganda and because of some people's disbelief, they don't want to believe as opposed to people who want to believe, which is as dangerous. If you don't want to believe something, you'll dismiss all the evidence to the contrary. And sometimes if you want to believe something, you'll create evidence because you want to believe it so much. So those 10%, just using Blue Book as an example, I think it was about 10%. Those are credible cases in the sense that you have military personnel saying that they've seen things. You've got very well-trained pilots. You've got people that are considered credible, mm-hmm. that are cons- liable, and they're saying, this is what I saw, and they're doing it against their career. They could lose their career. They could lose their the, the respect that their colleagues have for them. They could lose their positions of power. I mean, all kinds of things could happen. They could lose their their marriage, their life. Look what happened to someone like Bob Lazar. And I think, unfortunately, I did a show on this recently. I did a, I, I like to play on words on, on my show to name my shows. And I had a show called You Followed, or Next, I, I'm trying to think of what it was. It was like America's Next Top Celebrity Ufology Edition, or Ufology America's Next Top uh, UFO Celebrity, something along those lines. Because it seems like a lot of people, that was around the time the the Bob Lazar film came out, a lot of people want to be the new Bob Lazar. They want to be the next Art Bell. They want to be somebody that came before. They want the celebrity that comes along with it. But for people like Bob Lazar, let's I personally believe Bob Lazar, but let's say Bob Lazar was lying. If Bob Lazar was lying, he lied and he ruined his life for a lie that didn't really get him anywhere except a a bunch of people that really like UFOs follow what he does. That's about it, unless I'm missing something in in the story. And it seems like a lot of people want that fame. They want to live that kind of a rock star lifestyle today, but they don't want to do anything to earn it in the sense that they don't want to have to do any legitimate research. They're not necessarily even involved in anything like a Bob Lazar supposedly working for the United States government and the military or working under, um, you know, certain uh, the aerospace industry, certain companies. So if you really break it down, there are very small percentages of cases, let's say for ufology in in UFO sightings that are very credible. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the 10 percent. We're looking at the, the, the very small number that are credible, that are not planes flying over, that are not satellites, that are not reflections of light. They're not Venus and it's the same thing with anything else. It's the same thing with, with ghosts. It's the same thing with even demonic possession. It's the same thing with other weird anomalies like this, this mysterious colored snow that has been seen all over Eastern Europe and parts of Russia. There was black snow reported in Siberia this week. And they say in the, in the mainstream news, I think it was a, a report out of The Guardian. There was one from the BBC. There was, I think there was an ABC News or CBS and they said, well, this is just pollution. It, it's pollution. That's why there's black snow. It's like timeout. There's also purple snow in Russia. There's blue snow in Russia. There's orange snow in Eastern Europe and Russia. There's red snow. Hmm. All of these different snows. There's yellow different... snow in Arkansas, too, but there, by the way. Yeah, that was the joke that a lot of the, a lot of the newspapers that I read said. They <laughs> said, well, for the yellow snow. But what, what, what do they say? They say it's all just, it's, if it's not algae, that was one of the explanations for the red snow. They say this is all just pollution. Well, if that's the case, it's all just pollution. China is far more polluted, arguably, than these some very remote parts of Russia. Places like New York City, far more polluted than these remote parts of Russia. Why are we not seeing purple 
red, blue, orange, and black snow and rain in places like China or New York City. So it's just, you can, and I'm not saying that the scientists who do an investigation or the journalists who do an investigation, which is very, they're, they're very few and far between who do objective analysis of things. I'm not saying that they're wrong, that they're, they're, they're submitting a hypothesis. This is why the snow was black. This is what this UFO sighting was. This is what this, this, this uh, paranormal investigation, this is what we determined. But unless you put all of that information together in context, it doesn't make as much sense. Otherwise, you can just write off these anomalies and say, okay, that blue snow doesn't matter, the orange snow doesn't matter, that UFO doesn't matter, that UFO doesn't matter. But when you bring it all together, then you have a collection of very, very credible pieces of information, very, very credible accounts, very, very credible stories that begin to make a little bit more sense. And you can see that there is absolutely 100% validity in these types of things that some people write off as being insane or some people add far too much to it because they want to believe so much. If you just take a step back and you ask the appropriate questions using common sense and logic, then you can get a little bit closer to that elusive thing that so many people refer to as the truth. And there you go, folks. That's what we're trying to get to. And look, we're going to go down the list of things. I do, I've got some text ins here, even some questions over on Spreaker for you about... Uh, what your beliefs are on certain things uh i'll ask maybe he knows maybe he's not familiar with some of them but that's the cool thing here we're going to try to figure it out because getting to the truth not saying that we deliver the truth 24 7 but there's the right way to get to it and uh doesn't mean it's not entertaining it's just really compelling once you really try to get to the real truth we'll be right back Analysis for today's guest is provided by the International House of Shrinks, serving the collective psyche of our audience for over 14 years. So bring your fears and phobias, hallucinations and delusions to the International House of Shrinks. 15 couches, no waiting. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. I'm Ryan Gable, and I want to remind you to keep your radio, phone, tablet, or computer tuned to the Fringe FM and visit the website thefringe.fm to listen to the entire lineup of shows. You can also catch my broadcast, The Secret Teachings, Monday through Friday, beginning at 12 a.m. midnight U.S. Pacific Time, right here on The Fringe FM. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. Do you ever wonder why there's so much show in politics? Do you ever wonder why America's not getting fixed? Ever wonder why our media is not reporting the news? They report only their biased opinion. Are you tired of feeling like a controlled rat? Do you wonder what's next? If you're looking for answers, join me, Ronnie McMullen, for my new show, Deep Waters Radio. That's Deep Waters Radio. Monday nights, 9 p.m. Pacific, right here on the Fringe FM. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums. Real people, real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. 
when I'm done running with the wolves after hunting down a half-ton bison, I look forward to a mind-teetering escapade evening on The Fringe FM. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. This is Cortana from Shift Happens, telling you to pour a glass and park your ass, because you're listening to KTLK, the Fringe FM. Shifthead. Folks, this is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has .003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with, (laughs) you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people. One by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Howdy, this is Catalina, and you're listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop. back to Lighting the Void. I am Joe Roop. Hey, guys, I want you to give a warm, warm shout out to Dan Lopez if you can. Send him a message, whatever you can do, tell him you love him. The cool thing about Dan, the Reverend Dan Lopez, is he's back home. He's out of the hospital. He's back home and he's getting better. Uh, But he's still transitioning from uh, the hospital to home. So hopefully... I mean, I can't promise you guys we're going to hear his voice again on this show, but I will say that he's doing better. I heard from him today, which was a good sign. But tonight we are talking with Ryan Gable. We're talking about discerning the truth. And uh, before we get into the other things like the occult and the paranormal and conspiracy, I just want to stay on this UFO thing just a little bit longer here just to say that I do believe, and it doesn't really matter, I guess, if you really think about it, it doesn't really matter what I believe about UFOs, but I, I do believe that they're here. What matters is, is that we figure out what's really going on, if it's military, and this is just my opinion, if it's military, if it's alien, or if it's interdimensional, all right? And some of the things that I've saw on UFO seekers, the few times they did capture things that we can't explain, and in my opinion is a ufo and that's a pretty good point ryan because somebody could say well i really don't know what that is so it's a ufo but i mean deep down you could say well that looks kind of like a plane right so yeah we need to learn to define things first but i wanted to really stay on ufos to talk about this and this is something i brought up about the astral realm ryan too is the agenda behind the message is something that we just got to stop skipping over So when we hear a message, it's my opinion that the first thing that we should do, and maybe it's because I have a sales background, but the first thing that we should do is figure out what is the agenda behind this message and then go from there. Before you even begin to look at documents and study, it's important to even acknowledge that there's an agenda behind all of this stuff. Would you, would you agree with that, Ryan? I would agree with you, Joe. That's a very good summary. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to look at the agenda. Some people say follow the money, although sometimes we don't have uh, a way to follow the money, let's say, because some people aren't necessarily making money doing the things they're doing, but they are selling you an idea. They're selling you an ideology, and they're attempting to, rather than grow their bank account, they're attempting to grow their ego, and they're attempting to grow 
the image of themselves in the view of other people and how how powerful they are, how intelligent they are, how wise they are, how much information they have, the whistleblowers they're connected to. Some people aren't necessarily looking for money. Some people are looking for that. Other people are looking for both. And then you have some people that are truly psychopathic. I don't really know that there are many psychopaths in the industry of what we do, but then there are some people that are psychopathic. You find this in corporations and in governments, positions of very, very high power. And they don't necessarily have any type of reasoning behind what they do. Some people just want to cause harm, conflict. They want to watch other people suffer. And we can't look at their actions and say, well, I wouldn't do that, so I don't think they'd do it. No, they do do it. They will do it. They'll continue to do it. Just because you won't do it doesn't mean they won't do it. They can't empathize with their with their victims. So that's just a kind of a, a very general basis of what I think of when when I listen to you say that. Yeah, I I have struggled with that too. Even when the nine eleven stuff happened and all those conspiracies came out, I was like, man, nah, man, they really wouldn't do that to us, would they? Would they murder all of their own citizens like that just to get an agenda? No, no way. But if you start looking at some of the evidence, uh, even circumstantial stuff, then you got to really dig down. It's kind of like um, here's where this I think this gets crossed up though, and I hate to even bring it up, but flat Earth, right? So how in the how in the hell is this surviving? This is a question a lot of people ask. How is the flat earth phenomena still surviving today? How is it still being pushed? That well, number one, like Ryan mentioned earlier, there's definitely a flat earth cult. But what's the agenda behind the message? The agenda behind this message, I believe, is to to tell everybody that the deception is so big that we live in a reality that we can't even recognize. That's how big the deception is. And that every, it's kind of like a a victim um, agenda, right? That's the way I look at it. Now, when these guys go do their math, at first you think they're making good points because of some of the math they do. But when you really look into it, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to buy into it. And that's why I think it's surviving because there's an entire cult built around it. Just like, and I hate to bring this up, but I'm going to just like the blue avian thing, right? There's an entire, to this day, right now, there's an entire cult built around it that people would tell people like you and me that were and others that have spoke out against it that know it's crazy now that, uh, no matter what the evidence is, that we are shills of the government. That's how much they want to hold on to this story. And not to mention that they're throwing tremendous amounts of money at this story still to this day. And I think this thing is going to be like flat earth. It's just going to linger and linger. And my whole point is, is it hurts the real audience of people that are trying to find the truth, man. That's why, that's why we're doing this. I didn't get into this for the entertainment factor. I don't find myself very entertaining. I try to be and, and compelling, but that's not why we're here. I don't really think that's why you're here, although I know you appreciate entertainment. But at some point, the truth has to matter, right? And then if I get angry about it, then I just sound like I'm whining. And that's what I learned from you, Ryan, is like it's okay to get mad about it. It's okay to say that this upsets me. And say something about it. Yeah, for what it's worth, Joe, you are very entertaining. I listen to you just when you're talking. I I get enjoyment out of it. And uh, I mean, it's 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 a lot of your voice and your demeanor. It's it's a lot more calming, I think, probably than mine. Mine tends to come off belligerent sometimes. But yeah, yeah, you're just a big old bully. That's what people think. (laughs) I am a big old bully. I'm just trying to cause problems it's okay to be like that, not to cause problems, but it's okay to, to be passionate one. And it's okay to say, you know, I know for sure that X, Y, Z is, is wrong or that it's, you know, let's say that that particular detail is wrong and here's why it's wrong and you can prove why it's wrong. And then people that believe that detail and they say, well, you go, wait a minute, you can't, you can't say that's wrong because that's what I believe Okay, but I can still prove it wrong. That doesn't make me a genius. That just means I found information to the contrary of what you believe. And I'm sure that there are many things that I believe that you could say, 
Have you looked at it from this point of view? Rather than fighting with each other over whether or not somebody's right or wrong in every little specific case, why don't we take some responsibility in taking a deep breath and then like David Icke, I like David Icke says, take a step back from it and look at it again and then you can see it for what it actually is. So there are a lot of things that we should take a step back from, take a deep breath, and we should look at it again. It could be ufology or any of the other topics we'll discuss on this show, my show, or any other show you listen to that is similar in nature to, to these types of themes. I think one of the big problems psychologically is, as, as I was growing up, I had this personal experience. I was raised in a very, I'm using the word loosely, conservative Christian family, household environment. And when I rebelled against that, my first thought was, I'm going to become a liberal and I'm going to become an atheist. I went to the very opposite of everything that I had been taught. And then I realized one day, wait a minute, uh, I don't have to be an atheist. I don't have to be a liberal. And so I shifted to being a libertarian by definition. I shifted. I went through. I thought, hmm, what about Islam? What about Judaism? Maybe I'll be a Buddhist. And then one day I recognized, wait a minute, I don't have to be anything. I can just be me. I can have an experience, and I can take a little bit from different places where things make sense. And I think one of the biggest issues, as I just started to say, is that things are so knowingly corrupt, whether it's because of money or because of power or for some other reason. Like we know historically about cover-ups, so cliche to say that it seems, it's so stale, Joe, but we know about cover-ups, we know about military and government testing on civilians. We know about testing radiation through, uh, through uh, downwinders. We know about vaccines that have been used to spread disease or to test certain things. We know that inmates and prisons and psych wards and even the military have, have been used as guinea pigs and test subjects. So we know those kinds of things will happen. So then when we, as some say, awaken when we wake up to what's going on, it's again, kind of cliche and stale, but when we wake up to what's going on, our immediate reaction is, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't believe any of this. I want to go to the very opposite, like I did as a kid. And so the very opposite of everything is perfectly fine, believe in what you're told, whatever that might be, this is the status quo, this status quo is God, you go to the very opposite. You kind of become an anarchist. It's like, ah, I hate the government. The government's bad. It's the Illuminati. It's the cabal. They're taking over everything. And then when you swing back from that extreme, you kind of find yourself in the middle where you realize, well, there, there really are people that work within the federal government, within the state government, within the local government. Most of them are just average, everyday people like you and I. Yes, some of them support things. A lot of them support things that uh, I disagree with. Most of that is just the, 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 the absolute criminal nature of certain, of certain, let's say, policies or trying to spend time and money making laws that are unnecessary to oppress people because some corporation has a lobbyist in Congress or right. something like that. But, but you move on past that, Joe, and it's just average, everyday people going to work, collecting a paycheck. It's not some evil Illuminati cabal. So you find kind of a middle ground there, and you can recognize that I think part of the problem is – Going back to what you said, I'm, I'm kind of digressing a little bit. I'm trying to bring this around full circle as, as, as I see it. It's that we see things as being so corrupt, let's say in government, that we immediately shift to the very opposite of government. And the very opposite of government in, 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 in most of our perceptions, at least I think, is no government at all. And then you come back and you're like, well, maybe there can be a government. The point I'm trying to convey is we have this process by which we shift back and forth between belief to belief to belief if we allow ourselves to be open. And eventually, we'll probably find ourselves in a very neutral position where we can actually step back, take a deep breath, look at it again, and then we can examine anything and everything without applying our narrow and rigid perception to it based on what we've been taught since childhood, we can actually look at it objectively. Does that all make sense, or did I just ramble? No, it makes it makes perfect sense. What you're saying is actually what a lot of people are thinking, right? Uh, and I understand that some people want to be told what to think. In fact, I've seen it from the time I grow up, from the time I was a little kid, a lot of people want to be told what to feel, what to believe, and what to think. It's easier, right? You can see this in, in churches. You can see it in political rallies. 
it's easier when somebody's behind a mic or standing up on a podium somewhere telling you what to look at and think so you'll consider it there's nothing wrong with with that but i think the way it's being presented nowadays is it's got this online marketing spill on it a lot of things do to where oh yeah they Lots. yeah so they take groups of people uh you know and they get together in these rooms and these are these are marketing teams to try to figure out how to best present something to you the listener so you will bite and not to mention present it so you will bite but to keep it going to keep the lifestyle going now, i've talked to countless guests show hosts and other people that wonder why they're not getting on bigger shows when there's some of their stories are just fabulous right like their information is great. Their documents are great. Their stuff is great. It's like George Carlin said, man, there's a big club, right? And you ain't in it. Okay. And so this club has infiltrated our community and it's just now starting to tear apart. Some people aren't going to survive it and some people are. And we've got to make sure as a community that it doesn't happen anymore. Right. So, th so you, if you guys are wondering why like Ryan wants to go to contact in the desert and uh, why we do what we do, it's because of that agenda. Like the show we did on Lucifer. I didn't do a show, which some people thought I did a show on Lucifer to, to tell you what my belief on Lucifer was. I did a show on that to have a general discussion about something that has been on a lot of people's mind that many of these big influencers could not explain and still cannot explain to have an open discussion. So maybe we can have more to look at. What did I get back? Well, I got a whole lot of people telling me what Lucifer really is good and bad people saying I was dumb for doing the show. Others saying that obviously Lucifer is the devil when clearly the documents show that they're two separate beings. Right. And just on and on and on and on and on. So I do these shows. Then I look at all the stuff that comes back so I can kind of see where we are. And this is where we are. People go to where they get either validated or, and I hate to say this, and I've fallen into this category many times myself, is maybe we're just a little bit gullible. Maybe we're too easily influenced, when it, especially when it comes to things that we like to talk about, like the paranormal, UFOs, and conspiracies. It's, it's frustrating for guys like Ryan and I to see stuff like this, even though we're humans ourselves. That's what I'm saying. I, I think you're on fire tonight, Joe. Absolutely. That's exactly what I think. That's exactly what I know a lot of other people think. Some people are just a little bit too afraid, afraid to say it because of their position, whether it's in radio or maybe it's in their own personal life. You know, it's funny how a lot of us, we, we see ourselves in a community and we, we feel that we can talk to other people, even if it's just online. It's like an online family. We can talk to people about ghosts and aliens and conspiracies and genetically modified foods. And then when we talk to people outside of the community, they're usually interested in like three things. They want to know who won the football game. They want to know if you watch the Grammys or, you know, you watch the new TV show on Fox this week. Like that's, it's just really, really low level. I can't have a conversation usually with somebody like that. So we find ourselves in a little tight knit community. It's, it, it is a cult. It's not a bad thing necessarily. I'm in the cult just like the rest of you are. We can communicate with one another, uh, with, with one another. We can talk with one another. And that's a great thing. The problem is outside of the cult, people think that we're crazy. And we tend to think that people outside the cult are crazy. And I think that people outside the cult have a point as much as people inside the cult have a point. We need inside the cult to recognize that just because we believe something doesn't mean that it's true. Just because we want to believe something doesn't mean that we should fabricate evidence to make it seem more relevant or more factual or more prominent than it really is. And we have to recognize that People outside the cult have a point there. However, if we could have an objective analysis of what we as human beings think and what we believe, our own personal beliefs, the person outside the cult should also recognize that dismissing anything that they don't want to be true doesn't mean that it's 
all of the sudden untrue. Maybe in their reality it becomes untrue, but dismissing every case of a UFO because you don't want to believe it doesn't mean that those cases just disappear and vanish. And then again, likewise, yeah. going contrary to that doesn't mean because you believe in UFOs that every single thing you see is an alien spacecraft. There, there has to be some kind of balance here, Joe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I say, when I say that words are the, the least reliable, I guess you could say, form of transportation for truth. We think they are. We've been taught they are. You know, from the time we were little, the word of God, this word, that word. Words are just words, right? They're just sounds to represent something that that mean things so that we understand each other with. But they don't really uh, describe our experience. And I think we don't learn from the past as a race. We always talk about human evolution, the planet, and all this stuff. We don't even learn from the past. We don't even learn from our past experiences. We're still doing things over and over and over again. In our personal lives, we, especially if you're religious or you're a fanatic, you will, and I've done this myself in my life, uh, but I'm trying not to. We will take our direct experience and push it to the side because we want to believe the words more, which is totally insane. It doesn't make sense. Our experience tells us one thing, but the message is this, and we've always been pushed and taught this message, so maybe it's all in my head or maybe it's just me. I'll push my experience to the side and go with the message. That is a really big problem, I think. That's a huge factor in science. Science is observation. All of us are scientists to some degree, but in institutional science, it's not science as a form of observation. It is the biased scientist paid to find a specific form of, of detail in their research, a, a particular conclusion that leads to the scientific method being used to promote things that are anything but based on solid science. They are true pseudoscience. So the real scientist, as far as I'm I'm knowledgeable of from what I learned in high school, the very little that I did learn. Science is basically, okay, I have a hypothesis. I have a theory. Let me test that theory. Let me test that hypothesis in the lab, in the field. And I do it several times. I replicate the results. I get that information back. Here's my conclusion. How does it match with the theory? All right, three of the things that, that I theorized on are, are right. The fourth one is wrong. Let me adjust the theory. Now I have a pretty good idea of, of what I was theorizing on. And so instead of changing the theory to match the conclusion, and it's not just in the mainstream science industry, when we think of science, the lab coats and the laboratories, it's anyone who's making an observation, whether we are interested in UFOs or the paranormal or food or whatever it might be, rather than taking information and altering our theory based on what we've concluded, we are just typically, we're typically taking the conclusion and we're altering it to align with what we, we determined before we even conducted the study. In other words, we want a certain conclusion. We want our computer models to say that New York will be 30 feet underwater in 2075 if we don't have a carbon tax. So let me plug the information in, and there's the computer model. See, computer models say New York will be 30 feet underwater. Yeah, because you plugged that information into a computer. It's the same thing with anything else. Well, scientists say this. Doctors say this. Yeah, they say that because if they haven't been paid directly, there's some kind of powerful influence that directs their belief system to this particular conclusion. That's how we were raised. That's how we were taught. That's how we were educated in school. It's altering in the scientific method, it's altering the conclusion to match our theory as opposed to altering the theory to match the conclusion. Yep, that's that's kind of exa what I was saying. But, yeah, that too, right? So we, we, we alter conclusions and theories that way, the same way we push our experience. This, for instance, like the, the out-of-body experience I've had, I've talked about a lot on the show, and uh, – I was always fascinated with Robert Monroe's views the way he did it because after he had one of these experiences, he never came to a conclusion about 
what was really going on. He just reported what happened and then he would test it again and then talk about his experience and test it and talk about his experience. And after three books and all of these experiences and stuff, he came to his own conclusions about what consciousness was, which, and, and to this day still, he never said, this is the ultimate truth. This is my experience. And he always reported it that way. And ever since I started talking about the subject, I can't tell you how many people have tried to come to me and tell me what's really going on with me. And at some point, you start to get a little offended because you're like, look, I'm the one experiencing the crap, not you. I mean, you may have had something that was close to it, but I know what happened. I journaled it. I got it right here. This is the truth as far as what I know that's going on. And we don't do that I think we just need to do that in all of this stuff because yeah, there's weird stuff going on. Yes, there are UFOs. I'm not sure about the aliens thing. I believe in it, but I know there's UFOs in my experience because I've seen one. I know that the occult is real because in my experience, time after time after time, it's just not a coincidence anymore. And I know there's conspiracies. The problem is, is with all these marketing messages we're getting now, we're getting far, far away from it. But we do got to take a... Pluto's Zen Buddhist Mantra Center and Discreet Loan Shark Service, your one-stop shop for high-interest lending and eternal cosmic enlightenment. Remember our motto, we can't show you the sound of one hand clapping, but if you don't pay off your loan in time, we will introduce you to the sound of two kneecaps disintegrating. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation and Angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones. Please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio. A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Magic, the occult, history, health, news. These are just a few subjects discussed on my radio broadcast, The Secret Teachings. I offer unique and objective perspectives on new and old subjects alike while welcoming guests and presenting my own research with no filter. Visit my website for more information and to subscribe to my archive at www.thesecretteachings.info and find me on The Fringe FM live Monday through Friday, midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. Hi, this is Sammy. Join us in the Deep South as we're lighting the void with Joe Roop on the Fringe FM. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? 
With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find us on Amazon or go to faststartdiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, we will include our number one rated appetite suppressant spray free with your order. Whatever your diet plans are, start with us at faststartdiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE. You hoy there. Gigi here. And I'm Cortana, and we're going to bring you on a journey through all things paranormal, metaphysical, ufology, and even psychedelic. On our show, Shift Happens, live Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific, that's 10 p.m. Eastern, on The Fringe FM. And remember, kids, don't feed the archons, feed ducks instead. Duck up. We are back on Lighting the Void. We're here with Ryan Gable, host of the Secret Teachings radio show. that comes on midnight Pacific time here, five nights a week on the Fringe FM. And uh, I really got to say real quick, too, that we only have, what is it, till the, the equinox, actually. 27 days, 21 hours, and 49 minutes. I cannot wait. I'm so sick of the winter, man. I am ready for the crickets, the frogs, the super cool nights guys to come out and the longer days. It sucks, doesn't it, Ryan? Like it gets dark early, everything sucks, it's cold. Some of you guys like that stuff, like you Canadians. I don't I don't understand how you get how you live like that. <laughs> yeah, I prefer the heat. I like the desert. It gets cold in the desert, but I'd prefer the scorching heat. Yeah, for sure. Uh we let's take the subject into the occult and magic because this is the one this one that this frustrates me discerning the truth about the occult and magic when i first got into this community i had already and you are probably one of the only people that know this that know the full extent or close to the full extent of my knowledge on the occult and magic to this day i still haven't talked about it on the show because of everybody's viewpoints and biases and everything about it. There's so much more I would like to talk to you about, but I feel like, okay, as uh, UFOs are safe. The paranormal safe. Uh, even conspiracy is a safer subject to talk about this. Why? Because this is one of those fields where everybody puts past their personal experience, especially if they don't have any with it. They put past the documents, the evidence, and what's really going on. And when you hear the words magic, I've even heard people say, well, when we talk about magic, we're specifically meaning, you know, dark black magic, right? So that word already has a connotation to dark black magic. Uh, and the word occult, whoever came up with that word needs a kick in the ass because they didn't really know what was going to happen. I'm sure they didn't mean uh, that it was going to have such a scary connotation, but it does now. And everything I've studied about it, other than the grimoires and, and, you know, and demonic invocations and stuff, all the other things that I've studied about it, yes, there are dark sides to it, but there's dark sides to a knife as well, you know. But anyways, these things tap into our, our divine nature, like secrets that have been hidden from us for a long time and not hidden from us uh, by by people that we think that are hiding it from us. As a matter of fact, most of these mystery schools have been open if you're willing to go through the door and say, hey, what's going on here? But that's not what you're told. You're, t- you're taught to be afraid of the teachings, afraid of what, what this stuff is, and that they're out to recruit you and to, to get you to worship Satan in the end and all of this stupid stuff. And I've tried to touch on it so much on this show, but it's one of those things where, like, if I step out into the, to the pond just a little bit too far, the, the ice is going to break underneath me. And I'm not, I'm tired of it, man, to be honest with you. I'm sick of it because this is one of the most misunderstood subjects to this day, I think, is magic and the occult. I think a lot of occult subjects are kind of like scarecrows. And the subjects could be topics or they could be certain symbols and images like Baphomet. When I was on Kev Baker earlier, we were talking about him, H-I-M, his infernal majesty, 
Momo, Chinese for Devil, Slender Man, The Shadow Monster, all of these different manifestations of evil in movies and TV shows, music and music videos. And when we were talking about that, we came to the subject of a character named Him from an old TV show. Do you remember a TV show in the 90s called The Powerpuff Girls, Joe? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah remember I sure th- do. Remember that devil character? His name was Him. Yeah. He was a... He was a red devil, and he was kind of like a – when I was on Kev Baker today, uh, this guy named Scott, who was kind of co-hosting with Kev, he said, he said if you, you look at this character from the Powerpuff Girls, he was commenting on what I had brought up. He said it's like a really creepy character. This guy's like a, he's like a crab, but he's a, but he's a man, but he's also kind of like a woman. He's kind of like a transvestite. He wears these stockings on his leg like fishnet. And he talks in a really distorted and soft yet manly voice. It's really weird. He was kind of like a transgender, transvestite devil character. And so Kev asked me, he said, well, doesn't that kind of sound like Baphomet? What do you think, Ryan? And I said, well, I, I, I think Baphomet is actually a very positive image. I think Baphomet is a merging of male and female, man and woman, and it merges the two in an alchemical transmutation that leads to the production of a third in the sacred trinity i said something like that yeah and it's totally different to exploiting 0.7 percent of the population in the united states who really are transgender legitimately not that they've been brainwashed they really are transgender exploiting that group of people and making it seem as if you just came from mars to earth and you watch the news you'd think that every person in the country was transgender or homosexual because that's where the media takes takes the conversation. That's where entertainment takes the conversation. So why is there so much attention being directed towards that? Why is there so much attention being directed towards the disintegration of traditional relationships? Why is there so much attention being directed towards the promotion of promiscu- promiscuity and homosexuality? And not just homosexuality or promiscuity, but perversity and depravity the likes of which the world probably hasn't seen to this extent since the Weimar Republic in the 1920s in Berlin and Germany, where they performed the first male-to-female sexual surgery at the Institute for Sexual Sciences run by Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld. So that's an interesting history if anybody's interested in looking at that specifically. But on the subject of the transgender uh, Baphomet, as people bring up, when you look at that, that's a, that's a positive thing. When you have this, this idea of, of people being three different genders at once and being gender fluid, yeah, there might be three or four people in the country that actually feel that way natural. The rest of this is or, not organic, it's synthetic. And so what ends up happening is you have a culture that is, and we saw this in Germany, we know what happened in the 20s, you have a culture that is slowly degraded, a culture that loses its soul, loses its morality, it turns into a crime-ridden, disease-infested pile of feces, let's say. That's, that's how I look at it. And in that case, when you look at the way that transgenderism is promoted, and this all relates to your question, Joe, I think. When you look at the way that transgenderism, transgenderism is promoted in that way in the destruction of the family, and since more people are going to be gay and transgender and you have increases in infertility and sperm counts dropping, well, that means that scientists now have to find a way to help humans reproduce, which they now have offered a solution to this problem. And they've said that women can have skin cells taken from their body and they can turn those into sperm and they can just impregnate the woman with a tiny little clone of herself. And that's a little bit distant in the future. But at least right now, we have a brave new world. We can genetically engineer a baby. We can mix together eggs and sperm. We can create more eggs out of the woman's skin cells, this is the cutting edge of reproduction science today. So the scientist then takes over, the laboratory takes over, the genetic engineer takes over the production of human life. Make no doubt about it, they are taking over. Absolutely, Joe. Absolutely. And that is a totally different, distorted and depraved version of what people call transgenderism and transsexuality when you compare it in contrast with a Baphomet, which is the merging of male and female to create a third, it's the spark of, of life in the power of the orgasm, which would be eliminated in the 1984 story. Uh, the, 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 the scientists, or he said the scientists or something, that they're working on it now. Yeah. When, you have, 
when you have a, a character like Baphomet, Baphomet, I think, is like a – this is where the point I was getting to. I kind of digressed a little bit. Baphomet's kind of like a scarecrow. It, it scares away the crows, but Baphomet's kind of like a scare a cult. It, it scares away the people that are not really ready to understand concepts that if they were to have – an understanding of them, it could empower them in a way that they could hurt themselves or others. They could abuse them. So Baphomet acts as a guardian to that information, and it can be put there in the public. Some people embrace it as evil. Some people embrace it as neutral. Some people embrace it as positive. But the people that truly understand what that symbol is, what it represents, what it means, have an understanding that transcends all of the arguments, and it leads them to a very neutral and objective and pure understanding of things like, for example, in the Bible, John fourteen six, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. If mm-hmm. you look at the way and the truth and the life, the middle path is the way, the middle path of the Buddha. On Baphomet, two horns, flaming torch in the middle, that is the middle path. The torch, the light, like Lucifer, crucified between the two horns, the two thieves of apparent contradiction. All of this relates, and I think all of that perhaps answers your question in part. It sounds to me like, my brother, you've been reading a little bit of some Eliphas Levi among some other writers, and that's the problem. Uh, when people look at <laughs> Baphomet, they, they'll look up an article, if they even attempt to understand it, they'll look up an article on the Internet, which usually on Google, it's going to lead you to something you, you gotta n- go to not that special. But you got to go to Smith, Joe. They won't crack open a book. Uh, that were some of the guys like Eliphas Levi and these other people that actually put the symbol out uh, for the first times in our society to teach us what it meant, and then it gets all twisted, right? There are a lot of things are represented in that in Baphomet, as above, so below. Occult science, it's pretty much the symbol of occult science, but indeed, yeah, it does act like a scarecrow because if you're not ready for it, you know, then you're not ready, but it's not. Another problem is, is you got churches that like the church of Satan or whatever that are pushing this thing around to like my hometown, like little rock. Well, we're just going to put up our statue of Baphomet and we're Satanists and the, the public are going to go, okay, so that's a satanic statue. Well, of course they're going to think that because the idiots that brought that statue that don't really want to tell people what it means or educate people what it means. They just want to use it to scare people. And therefore all the public is going to go, that's satanic. Well, they'll walk past goats all day long, and they're cute, but Baphomet is satanic. It's stupid, man. And if you yeah. have that mentality, you're never going to understand the occult. Western mystery schools, to boot, you're always going to point your finger from the outside and say, those are the evil guys running the world. It's stupid. The guy that said it, was the, it wasn't the Church of Satan, it was the Temple of Set. I think the Church of Satan distant, distanced themselves from that from that guy. I think his name is like Lucian or something. Lucian Greaves or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Lucian Greaves. Dude, I saw that guy, his Twitter page, when uh, when a lot of that was in the news, they were trying to sue the makers of the adventures of, the chilling adventures of Sabrina because they said that the, the statue of Baphomet and Sabrina infringed upon their intellectual property rights in using Baphomet. No, my well, God. But if anything, you infringe on Eliphas Levi's depiction of Baphomet because I don't know what the hell they th- th- this Lucian Greaves guy was thinking. But he's got like on his Twitter page, he's got the the statue of Baphomet as his background, and then he and for his profile picture, I noticed he has uh, it's just an up close of his face, and he has a pentagram that he holds onto his head upside down. And I thought, have you never even looked at Baphomet, dude? The, the the pentagram on Baphomet's head is not descending; it's ascending. It's the yeah. five points, the fifth point into the flame, going through the, t- the the twin pillars or the two horns. It's not descending. Not the and original one, but they've some people have manipulated it for sure. Exactly, and that's in this case what Lucian Greaves and the Temple of Set, or I just call it the Temple of Hell or the Church of Hell. I don't know what these people even think they they believe. They they they, they apparently think that it's like demonic, and they revel in the in the demon the the diab- diabolism of it. Or they know exactly what it is, and they're just having fun manipulating people into thinking that it's something that it's not. Right. It's like it's like the Rosicrucians, right? The original Rosicrucians back in the day. Uh, people want to think they're the they're this dark, evil society. The truth is, is the original Rosicrucians back in the day in the Renaissance time and stuff. They they were doctors and chiropractors and scientists, and they dressed normally. You wouldn't know them. You wouldn't know who they were. 
because they knew better. They weren't like me and Ryan out here trying to talk to you about it. They knew that you wouldn't understand it. But there was a couple of times in their life where they put out these manifestos in hopes that it would reach out to certain people that were seeking knowledge, that it would bring it back, you know, and we go round and round with this stuff, right? So now you've got a lot of these people going spouting this Luciferian agenda stuff, and they don't even understand the etymology of the words that are being used. It's they only understand the effect. And we get back to that whole cause and effect thing. I could have started this show and said, tonight, we're going to talk about the Luciferian agenda and all of the stuff that Lucifer does. And that effect would have put you in, ooh, some dark, scary stuff. We're going to talk about the evil people, right? But the real cause and the real agenda for me to do that was sensationalism so that you'll keep listening. That's how we get to the truth so you can see the agenda of the message. But we're not going to, we're so far from that with ufology, the occult, conspiracy, and everything that I think the real people behind all of these bad things are laughing their ass off because we all think we know the truth about everything. So you're getting me I, on a rant, right? I, I would prefer you rant more than me. I've been rant. I've been ranting all day on, on different. <laughs> I'm, I'm having, I'm having a blast though. This is really, really good stuff. I think this is the kind of thing that I would want to be listening to. If I was just listening to a radio show and I'm not saying that because I'm 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 guesting with you. I'm saying that because from what you're saying, Joe, uh, if I was just listening to you talk, this would be very entertaining and very informative. The 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 ability to look at something objectively doesn't make me or Joe more intelligent or wiser. The ability for you to do that doesn't make you more intelligent or wiser. It just means that we can take a deep breath, step back, and look at it again, and we can neutrally analyze something without being so invested in emotional reactions. And I think that's a huge problem. It's like I, I, have, a, I have a T-shirt. I'm, I'm going to be wearing it again. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, Hillary Clinton runs for president again so I can get some more use out of my Hillary for prison shirt. I would wear that thing around Boise, Idaho, Joe, and I, I experience – I just if I tell this story, I think it's easier than trying to explain it otherwise – I wear that shirt out. I don't support anybody. I don't support Trump. I don't support Hillary. I don't support any political individual. I would wear that shirt out, and I'd have people yell at me. I'd have people see the shirt. It said Hillary for prison, but they saw the P, and their brains put in president. So I'd have some people say, right on, Hillary for president. She's a great woman. And I'd say, actually, it says for prison. And then I'd get a middle finger and an expletive or something like that. But in a lot of cases, people actually read it and they saw it said prison. And this is the example I'd like to provide you for what I'm trying to I'm trying to explain. I remember one case in particular, but it happened several times. I walked out of my apartment. I walked across my my uh, uh, the parking lot that my parking lot in my apartment, uh, my apartment complex. And there was a, a woman standing outside on the other side of the parking lot. And she saw my shirt and she said, Hillary for prison. Well, you know, George Bush did bad stuff, too. That was her response. And I said, oh, OK, I don't like George Bush either. And there was like a moment of malfunction, it looked like, in her brain. And she just didn't look like she was able to process that. Or in other cases, it's like, well, you know, Donald Trump did this. I, I OK, I, I do know that. I don't like him either. And it's just like a moment of. Un, un, yeah, they want to get you polar, man. That's what they want to do. That's the, that's a good word to use. It's polarization. It's black and white. It's being unable to recognize that, wait a minute, not everybody agrees with me, but not everybody disagrees with me. Some people can agree and disagree. And if you're in a cult and you're only interested in preserving your beliefs and your points of view, then it's going to be really, really hard to listen to somebody else who has no agenda try to not necessarily help you. I don't like using that word. I don't think that's right. But at least show you, hey, there's another way to do this. We can have a conversation. We can have different points of view. And I don't have to yell at you because you believe something different than me. I don't have to polarize this discussion. And that that really is what a debate is. A debate is just two people sitting down, having a conversation. And at the end of it, they both maybe see a little bit more from the other person's point of view. And both of them grow in that sense. A debate 
On the other hand, is not people standing in front of a podium having questions read from some moderator on CNN that were given the questions beforehand by one of the candidates' teams, and and then we think that's a debate with a minute timer, and then everybody kind of argues their point. Like, yeah, you can define that as a debate, but a real debate are two people sitting down, having a conversation, they don't necessarily agree, and then they come out of that conversation being able to perhaps see just a little bit of the other person's perspective. That's how you grow. A debate supposed to help you grow not stagnate yeah for real uh i know you and i have had off the air we've had discussions about certain things that we don't totally agree on but at the you know we acknowledge each other like hey i i get what you're saying there but here's my point of view and blah 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 but that's the way things should go in a perfect world uh let's see uh, 918 area code you're on the air with ryan gable who he's speaking with with queen babylon <laughs> how you doing queen what's on your mind hey there queen I'm just good. Um, hi, Ryan. Um, I just wanted um, to bring up a point. Um, how you guys were talking about how people, how the majority of people say that Luciferianism and Satanism is like super evil and it's super bad and blah, blah, blah. No. So it made me think of a story that recently came out about a hardcore, you know, Christian guy. And um, and he traveled out to, like, India to some, like, island that's, like, strictly prohibited to go on to there. And um, he knew, like, what risk he was taking. Now, what I'm trying to get at is if this so-called light being is guiding him and telling him, hey, come here, come risk your life over here just to you know, tell these people about my love and all this and that, and he ends up getting killed. Well, it kind of like makes me think, like, why would this so-called light being or God of love or whatever, like, may, uh, tell you to go to an area where you're going to likely get killed, which, sadly, the guy did get killed by this um, Indian tribe that was living in this island. So... Well, so, I just yeah. wanted to bring that up because it's too much to type. Well, no, it's a good point, but th- what you're talking about is common sense. That's what you're talking about, <clears throat> common sense, which I would love to see more of in this community. It shows me that, like, that you have it, uh, and when you are delivered a message, when somebody tells you something, I mean, don't be gullible, man. Don't just go, uh-huh, and you just nod your head up and down like a bobblehead doll because it feels good. Think about why somebody's telling you something. Why are they giving me this message? That's the first thing we need to do. So, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. I think that guy's name was John Chow. I just looked it up. Is that right? Yep. The uh, the missionary. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I've never, this is the first time I ever heard about that story. Yeah, it happened like a couple months ago. But, um, yeah, it's just kind of, like, crazy. It's like, wow, you know. Yeah, I don't sure. know. Anyway. Well, it could also, it could also be interpreted as metaphoric if, if you're talking about this light being a Jesus, a Yeshua, a Zeus, a Jesus, telling people to go out mm-hmm. and to spread the word. If, if you read, let's say, where that actually comes from, from, a, from the biblical text, to go out and spread the word of Christ— we have to go back to what we said earlier. What exactly is Christ? What exactly is the Word? If you start to break those things down and understand them, then you might understand that it's objective morality, love, understanding, which is mm-hmm. described in the turning of the other cheek. Those are the things that you should go spread, not, hey, this is my belief, accept it, or I'm going to kill you. And in this case, this kid ended up dead right. because he's trying to spread his belief. It's metaphoric and it's symbolic as opposed to, to literal. Right on. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point. Thank you for your call, Queen. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Have a good Good night. Yeah, so she makes a good point. Like, at least that we know we have listeners now that, that, man, see, that makes me happy, right? Because then people actually get what we're trying to say. But why do I not see that? I know we got to take a break here, Ryan, but why... Is it just because I'm focused on the gullible people so much? Is that why I'm not seeing that there are actual people that have brains, you know? Um, Because this stuff, 
it makes me happy to hear that others like get what we're trying to say because this is one of the hardest shows that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I'm glad you're here with me is discerning the truth uh, because it's not popular. People don't want to talk about that, man. You want to, you're trying to tell me how to think. And that's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to tell you to think that's all. That's right. And you know, Joe, one last thing as we go to break here, I think it's really important. Let this kind of simmer. I've noticed this myself. I've had my own experience with this. Sometimes as an individual, we look for somebody else to do it first. And so if someone else says, all right, I'll pick up the flag, I'll lead the charge, I'll strike the first blow, then a lot of other people are willing to follow into that battle. I personally don't see myself as that kind of a person, but I'm willing to pick up the flag and I'm willing to run right into the heart of the enemy because I believe in objectivity. I believe in what people call truth, whatever that might be. I just believe in honesty and some form of virtue and morality. And I think that's really at the basis of most major world religions. That's at the basis of what so many people call God. That's at the basis of what so many people call the word, those kinds of ideas and ideologies. And if you don't fight for something like that, I'm not saying a physical fight, but if you don't fight for something like that, other people are going to, because of their own bias and their own agenda, they're going to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. And it's going to affect a lot of other people who might otherwise stand up against them. If someone came forward and said, you know, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to tell people, you know what? I'm not doing that. That's wrong. Sometimes we just need a little nudge. I had to be nudged at one point. Now I'm just trying to maybe help nudge other people who are questioning whether or not they should do it, do it, ask questions, shake up the status quo of any situation. Right, and I will tell you this. Look, I will say, okay, I'm going to tell you how to think just this one time, okay, for me. It's not negative to ask questions. So if you ever find yourself asking a question and being told you're being a negative Nelly because you're asking a question, I'm telling you right now to run for the hills, okay? Because it's perfectly normal to ask a question. But it might not be so normal uh, like the way you do it. But asking questions is perfectly normal. It's not negative. Stick around. We'll be right back. of the show is being brought to you by Ed's new microwave home videotape oven. The only microwave oven that lets you tape your TV dinners for playback at a more convenient time. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. All right, everyone, this is Justin from the UK. Excuse the chitty chitty. If you're into the fringe and you want to hear the brass tacks, me old China plate, Joe Roop, and his guests on Light in the Void will open your mince pies. You need to shut your northern self and use your 10 speed gears and listen to them bubble. You could hear a Barry Crocker, no Brussel, but he ain't no holy fryer. Anyway, you be the Barnaby Rudge and take a butcher's. Hey, Fringe FM listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. 
the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Your home has needs. It needs a healthy, dry environment all year round. Start by getting rid of the worst air in the basement and crawl space, where the problems begin and make the whole house sick. Introducing the new Smart Wave Ventilation Unit. It has advanced technologies to continuously reduce moisture, mold, and odors, and expel radon, gases, and pollutants. And now, wave units include carbon monoxide detection to automatically expel air at a high rate and send you an alert. It also has an app so you can remotely monitor the conditions. Wave is a comprehensive, maintenance-free, affordable solution that will transform your entire home. Protect your home and family with what it needs. Give it a new smart wave ventilation unit. For more information, call 888-717-WAVE. That's 888-717-WAVE. Or go to dryhealthyhome.com. That's dryhealthyhome.com. Wave Home Solutions. Greetings, galactic community. This is Suzanne Ross, host of Sci Spy Radio, every Wednesday evening from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific. Join me for this brand new show featuring a revolutionary new genre, Sci Spy, merging science and spirituality to give us answers to the greatest mysteries of creation. Together, scientific discovery and spiritual revelation reveal the truth about who we are, where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. Tune in to Sci-Spy Radio every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific and discover the truth for yourself. To Lighting the Void Radio. Follow The Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at The Fringe FM. The Fringe FM loves hearing from you. Have a suggestion, comment, or question? We're all ears. Email talkback at thefringe.fm. Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Rupler, here with the host of The Secret Teachings and author, Ryan Gable. And tonight we're talking about discerning the truth when it comes to all of these matters. Ufological matters, the occult, conspiracy, hauntings, paranormal, politics, you name it. We've got to do some better discernment. We've got to be better at this. Matter of fact, I think some people might need to look up the word discernment just to see what that means. The thing about Ryan, though, is Ryan is not afraid to stand in the face of a crowd, a mob or a cult or whatever you want to call it, because it's wrong in his eyes. And I've always respected that. And also, Ryan will do it in a way that most, I would say, radio hosts are afraid of, including myself a little bit. I don't like to point and poke and name names. But if something's wrong enough, I mean, at what point are you? you do you tell yourself, well, it doesn't really matter. You know, I've got to get this message out. And so we got a clip we're going to play. We'll play in just a second. But I, I want to, this clip Ryan sent me, which I, you probably want to brace yourself for. But we've got to understand that asking questions isn't negative. And that's something I wanted to go back on because I heard this before. Now, if I said, Ryan, uh, you know, you believe that uh alex jones is the god of you know information blah blah blah. you know that's kind of being negative because i'm being condescending or whatever right but if i said hey ryan what's your opinion on alex jones do you really think that he's given us a hundred percent truth all the time now i've asked questions like that before and i've been told that i was being negative 
does that come off as negative to you or if you does it come off as like i really just want to know the, the latter comes off as you just want to know and, you know t- tone can have a lot to do with it because if i was to ask the same question people tell me that i tend to come off kind of belligerent and uh passionate and it sounds like i'm angry when i'm not so tone has a lot to do with it but your latter question just sounded like you sincerely want to know and we and i bring that up because you and i've had this discussion about alex jones many times right and and i think um i don't know the whole truth i don't know if he's working for the cia if he is or if he isn't but what i do know is listening to him is entertaining and that's what i came up with at the end of that conversation uh but I think he does put out some good information sometimes. I'm not going to lie, but a lot of people do. Lots of people put out good information, and then they they top it off with their political agenda or their beliefs, right? They put that little political cherry on top yes. or something crazy on top of it that just doesn't make sense. So you get 90% truth with a crazy cherry, but the cherry is the agenda. That's what they want you to bite on. That's my point, you know. Yeah, you see a lot of that with Alex Jones. I, I personally love Alex Jones. I think not only is it entertaining, but it's informative. And it's just, I don't know, it's like it speaks to my soul. Some of the stuff he does is just completely, I'm laughing out loud. I, I think it's I think it's hysterical, some of the stuff that he does, like stunts and things of that nature. But, you know, there are a lot of things that Alex Jones does on his show that at the end of, of his talk, he talks about it's strictly Muslims or you can badmouth Muslims but can't say anything about Jews or, you know, it's it's all about Trump, 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 Trump. I don't necessarily like that kind of that kind of implication or that direct insinuation that this is exactly what's happening in those particular cases because, I mean, I know for sure that's not the case that all Muslims aren't like that because I have friends that are Muslims and they don't think any of the things that I hear on Alex Jones that doesn't mean I don't like Alex Jones. I love Alex Jones. I think Alex Dude's Jones is entertaining. I'm sorry. A- absolutely, man. Absolutely. But I, do I go to Alex Jones for like the, the, I don't have like a source of, I go to this guy for the truth all the time. I don't even go to Ryan for that. I listen to Ryan on a lot of things about how to find the truth or things that I just didn't think about before, but I've really put myself in a position to where not Clyde Lewis, nobody. I don't go to anybody for the truth, especially people that tell me we are here to deliver the truth. That should be a blind. That should be like, whoa, damn, dude. You mean you can tell me how a black hole works? Let's get into this. Like, yeah, we're all just humans, man. We're all trying to figure this out. Some people know more about certain subjects than others, but I think we give people way more credit than they deserve. Case in point, uh, this clip we're about to play, which Ryan has sent me. So brace her. You want to say anything about this before we play it? Yeah, yeah, I, I do, if, if you don't mind. You want me to say it now? No, I would, just, just for my sake. Okay, let me go ahead and point out what you and I were talking at break real quick. Negativity is to not say something to somebody when their house is on fire, when they have a flat tire, when they're about to drive off the road, just saying, you know, I could say in your head, I could say something to them, they're about to drive off this cliff, but if I say something that's kind of negative... No, 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 no. It's actually positive to alert somebody they're about to drive off the road or a cliff or their house is on fire. It's positive to do that. It's negative to ignore it because ah, I don't really want to deal with it right now. And so within the, the industry, let's say, within the community, there are so many great people over the years that I have come into contact with. And there are so many people that have been around long before I was ever conceived, long before I was ever born in 1991 that have been doing things that have brought so much information to the public, things that I would have never probably experienced or learned if it would not have been for people like, for example, Jordan Maxwell or Jim Mars, someone along those lines and those groups. Others, as you were saying earlier, have taken on a more cult-like mentality for a number of different reasons, some of its money, some of its ego, some of its narcissism, some of its a combination of all that and more. And it's doing a great disservice to people that have come before. They're standing on the backs of giants. And it's kind of like that clip from Jurassic Park where they're talking before the things start to go crazy in the park where they're all sitting around the table 
And uh, Jeff Goldblum's character says, you know, his problem with the genetic engineering is that, you know, you really didn't do anything to, to earn it. You just stood on the backs of giants and you took their work and then you have no responsibility for what you've done. You, you don't understand what you've done. That's kind of what I see happening in this this community as well, just like we see happening in real life, just like we see happening with genetically modified foods and geoengineering of the environment. People standing on the backs of giants who have done real investigative research, people who have been on the scene, like people like Jim Mars interviewing Jack Ruby. Jim Mars taught like one of the only first ever and only courses on the JFK assassination in Texas, like people that are right there. And then you have others like, I will use the name, I'm not scared, a David Wilcock, who I used to listen to. He absolutely does say things that I agree with. But the problem is, he mixes in a bunch of stuff that just seems like pure imagination. In a lot of cases, it is pure imagination. The crazy cherries on the top. The crazy cherries on the top, Joe. And so when we look at something like we're going to, uh, should say when we hear something, but when we have a look at some of the things that are said in this clip, what I've basically done here, I, I played this on a show of mine a couple weeks ago called Resignation Letters to Iwo Gaia where we talked about the Luciferian letter that David Wilcock wrote to Gaia. <sighs> and then we, talk, we talked about his, he, he wrote a giant apology letter saying that he didn't say the things he said in the resignation letter. So <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. So I put together this clip of, of various things that David Wilcock has said over the last couple of, of years at different conferences and different events. There's a section where he starts talking and then he stops and he addresses something in the room, and he wastes an, an, an unbelievable amount of time talking about things like, oh, that door opened, or, hey, my microphone cord is jammed here, or, hey, there's some buzzing in my ear. And, you know, I've noticed, Joe, from going to conferences and, 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 and having a radio show, yeah, there are certain things like, let's stop for a second and get this fixed. This guy is like a, a 10-year-old kid in school who didn't prepare his homework he didn't prepare the presentation, and so he's telling the teacher that he needs to move the podium closer. He needs to turn the lights down. And then he asks her, how many more minutes do I have? Am I, am I like three or four minutes into the five minutes here? And he hasn't even started his presentation yet. And while, while he's doing that, people are throwing money at him. So that's how one of the money? Elements. Dude, a lot of money. He's got a, some new presentation thing on YouTube now where people are just donating. It's like 10 15 20 30 40 50 dollars. If, if you want to do that, that's completely fine. He has a lot of interesting information that I can, I can find anywhere. But the, the issue with David Wilcock is the persona, the ego, and the hijacking of things that are really attributed to other people. And there's no credit given. There's no proof for these vague claims, which is another huge part of this clip. And I'll, I'll let you play it, is the, is the vagueness of things like they say, well, there's military tribunals going on and these tribunals are happening in different places around the world and they include key individuals not giving you any real legitimate information just being so incredibly vague that it just sounds really really good but when you break it down you slow down the audio it's like wait a minute different countries key individuals certain people involved it's there, there's no names of anything there's no details of anything it's just wild claims with no proof of anything and then when 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 you can prove the person wrong then people like david wilcock i've seen him do it a lot recently he says well we shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves that's negative it's not about whether i'm right or wrong it's just about working together well that's the thing that somebody says when they know that they've kind of been caught in a lie <laughs> don't look at me look at everybody else they're causing problems not me so you know that's what, what we're here. You know, when I figured out that that was BS is when, uh, back when I wanted to be a car salesman, I thought car salesmen made a lot of money when I was in my twenties. Right. And yeah. I wanted to be a car salesman and I got duped into taking this class where these, and this is, I'll tell you the scam. If you guys ever do this, don't do it. There's a class that these guys go around and they recruit people that are desperate to be, to be car dealers. And they teach you class about, they, teach you a class about car sales, but basically what they're doing is, is they're trying to get you to want to become a car salesman really bad and take your money. And then they do a hair follicle test because they know that nobody's going to pass that maybe one or two people. And then the dealership will hire, you know, maybe one out of the group of 30. And then eventually they lay them off because they suck as a salesman. But the guy that sold that class gets a ton of money 
and he kicks it back to the dealership, right? When really all you got to do is go up to the dealership, go to the manager and say, I want a job. That's all you got to do. But anyways, I was sitting at his desk and he told me how much this class was. He said, well, the class is $800. And I said, $800. Uh, it's only like a day class. Uh, I can't afford that. And he said, Joe, please, I don't want to hear that from you. You're being negative, right? Think positive. Let's find a way to figure this out, okay? When you say you can't afford it, you're literally manifesting this into your life. This, see, this is what I'm trying to teach you. And that's is that slick. you can't afford it. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you are a slick salesman, but no, you know, like I'm not going to do it. And I literally went to a different dealership and, I, you know, I fell for his BS for a little bit, but I didn't get into it, right? But I literally went to another dealership, walked up to the manager, and I said, hey, can I become a car salesman? He's like, well, why should we hire you? And I said, well, I really don't know anybody that doesn't like me. And he goes, fair enough. Come see me next week. You know, save me 800 bucks right there. All because I was, a, you know, being a little negative. So that's my point. But anyways, I've never heard this clip. So keep in mind if this if this gets any, uh, what do you call it, pushback. Just remember, I've never heard this clip. Doesn't mean I'm innocent, but. Negative uh, feedback. Yeah. Negative feedback, right? Yeah, negative feedback, which I can if, guarantee it probably will, but whatever. If, if you have an issue, just go ahead and stop it. It's 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 a couple minutes long here, but I'm sure before we go to break. Nah, I'm good. I'm not afraid. Let's do this. All right, let's go. All right, welcome to Cosmic Disclosure. I'm your host, David Wilcock, and we have a special surprise for you. Okay, then you're not going to leave disappointed. I made sure of that. I want you to get your money's worth. One of the things I was going to tell you is that I did sit on chocolate, okay? So this is not shit. One of the benefits of me having this really fast processing brain is I can watch movies and in real time see the cabal symbolism that people normally would only get subconsciously. There's going to be bootlegs of this on the internet, and those people won't know what the heck I'm talking about. You fueled this demand that's led to six million videos with my name in the title. And then he tells me that I could become the next Art Bell. That Art, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's you, right? <laughs> the next I could Star become Bell. the next Alex Jones. <laughs> Let's see if I actually, my wire is stuck, guys, under the thing, so I don't really have, I can't pace. So she's had the benefit now of getting to hear me talk, whether she wants it or not, for two years. The, this under, under the earth priestess Kari told me not to, if I want to be a priest, I got to be nice on stage, so... There was a couple people who didn't actually look, but I'm being nice because there was about 20 of you. So it's kind of a mass shaming thing wouldn't really work out too good for me. So you just get to be anonymously fingered. Lots of people send dick pics. You know, you just happen to get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, we're not going to do any live dick pics. What the broadcast. The two guys who cracked the code of quantum mechanics. And please, there's a lot of ringers going off. I told oh, no. them about what I heard in 1993. There's a really loud beeping noise over here. Would somebody please make sure that stops? Heard the airplane? Dr. Luke Montagnier, as I was saying, he's got this whole science where he takes the tube of water before I was so rudely interrupted by that plane. And then the story, the big, big story. I'm sorry, there's so much feedback. It's not my fault. It's th th There's so much. Well, there's obviously going to be that one dude in the back with his arms crossed, right? And his wife brought him out here. And he doesn't believe anything I say big event that I'm going to be telling you about is going to happen. So yes, every time somebody opens a door in the back, you're going to hear this thing clatter because it's just the wind pressure. It's nothing we can do about it. So let's try to keep those doors closed. I want you to get your money's worth. We're all like this little cult that we need to drink Kool-Aid and commit suicide. There's one guy in the back on three hits of acid, and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're still hanging around. They're inside the Earth, and they're on the moon, and they're on Mars, and they're all over the solar system. But they, is somebody really bored? I just heard, wow, wrong conference. You, maybe you need to take the bunny hill. This is the black diamond, okay? Start with cross country before you go downhill. What I do want to do, drink Kool-Aid and commit suicide. Sort of like when you got the bong and there's this little hole called the carb. This is a true story where I was a con man, a liar, a fraud. That's what they got off on, okay? We're hearing some people just speeding around up here in the mountains. It's, that's that's what that sound is. You can hear that in the background. It's this crazy traffic that's going on. They have actually put explosive charges into every bridge 
on the Eisenhower interstate system that goes over these big chasms. The Aquafarians, and they got uh, extinct in the electrical wars. How familiar are you with the gear wars exactly? Wait, hold on a second. Did she say Aquafarians? Yeah, dude, she said the Aquafarians, like the Dasanians. You never heard of that race? They're a water people. All right, then I'm sorry. I'll keep it. Well, there's only three more minutes. Uh, I... I'm saying I saw a lot of cloned hybrid uh, 3D printed beings. The Cabal's plan also included that the military goes around under the guise of national security and they literally go around and they siphon out the gas from everybody's cars in these big tankers. So they were doing this with people and they had these special animals. They were dogs, a German Shepherd Mastiff mix hmm. and, uh, and a bloodhound. Really? And they were there and they were in like a compartment but they can smell you as you walk by them for sure you cannot walk by them without them smelling you and they always know how to they go they just right right away smell oh it's unreal it's unreal it's unreal it's unreal all right everybody we're having a weird uh problem which of course is what happens with streaming it's a typical view in our mainstream reality that we're getting errors are we actually live? Are we actually streaming? Okay, we're sorry about this. This is probably some kind of... We are probably being attacked. Our bandwidth is being attacked. This is a predictable oh, event. It would make sense that our enemies would try to disrupt this broadcast, especially because we, you know, did it in advance. We told you this was going to happen. So we're talking about the living universe. Do I look good? Are we live now? I don't want to admit our flaws. Do I look good? So we look for the flaws in our environment. Yeah, I know the cue cards. Thank you very much. That's so generous of you to hold paper up in my face while I'm talking. This is a true story. Oh, it's unreal. It's unreal. And we have had quite a stunning synchronicity here. While my wife Elizabeth was in the kitchen writing an article about the fall of kings, this behemoth fell with this crashing noise in our yard. As you can see here, sticks hit the window, okay? It almost smashed into the house. There's sticks all over the place. I mean, it's just a huge mess. This tree came down, and the synchronicity of this is unbelievable. Because, here's why, there's sticks all over the place. Where I was a con man, a liar, a fraud. Very good intel from multiple insider sources. Key people in the deep state, in several locations in the United States, there are prison barges taking people to Guantanamo. People are being put on trial in secret tribunals. All these guys are being exposed. The truth is being revealed. And you deserve to know what's going on because children will be saved. Lives will be saved. Rapes will be stopped. I'm David Wilcock. I support the Alliance and I support your efforts in getting this word across to as many people as you can. Rapes will be stopped because this is real. Oh, it's unreal. It's unreal. It's unreal. Okay, so you did some of that for effect, right? Some of that cutting in there. Some of the cutting was the, the drinking Kool-Aid and the, and the I'm a fraud, I'm a liar, I'm a con man. Th those are my cuts, but everything else is legitimately you are, all. You, you ran off a third of my audience, by the way, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm blaming it all on Ryan as if I didn't push the button. Yeah. Dude, it's definitely all me. What What is he talking about? The tribunal stuff. What is that? That's uh, a big thing we've heard recently. Have you Have you heard about? You haven't heard about the tribunals? Honestly, brother, when it, I'm just going to give you the truth. The only shows I listen to at night are yours and Clyde's, and I listen to like late night Art Bell. You know when I'm trying to sleep, uh, but that's about it. So yeah, I don't really listen to that. What I understand is that, that there are supposedly thousands of sealed indictments of people in government and people in businesses and people all over the world. Very, very vague. And these sealed indictments mean that people are going to be put on trial and that they're going to be taken to, uh, you know, a, a prison or they're going to be given a life sentence somewhere else. I don't know, in a big hole somewhere or they're going to be uh, they're going to be executed. They give them the death, the death sentence. It's just a lot of stuff that is based on claims and, and there's no proof to support any of it. And that's really at the basis of unfortunately why <laughs> three quarters of your audience left. Oh, well. uh, I, dude, this, this stuff, this is real. This guy is basically running 
our little community. This guy is running the radio world, making his rounds, standing on the backs of giants, and promoting absolute nonsense. Prove to me what you're saying, and I'll be happy to support it. Make wild claims like a tree fell in my yard, and that's the cabal following, falling, and it's some type of grand synchronicity. Do the guy is mentally ill. And I, I mean, I, I sincerely at this point, I mean, it's funny, but it's like I feel sorry for this guy. And it's not about David Wilcock. It's about anybody who spreads information without being able to prove what they're saying and just making claims of I've got whistleblowers and I've got insiders and, and, and never being able to demonstrate what you're actually talking about and then using other information that is credible by saying, well, there actually are sealed indictments. So how do you know that? Well, it, 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 it was uh, – you know, it was uh, sunny out today, and you think, well, it was sunny today, so I guess the sealed indictments must be real. I get what you're, you're saying. Fiction, but in all fiction, fairness, fiction. though, in all fairness, there is a difference. I can see some of the stuff he does for effect, right? Like, I can definitely see it. But what about other people like, let's, let's take like David Icke, for example, right? What is the main difference between this guy and David Icke? David Icke right now or David Icke just overall throughout his whole career? Well, I mean, let's either way, like the message of, you know, the reptilians and the whole Saturn thing and all that stuff. There's really, I mean, what is the big difference? To me, the big difference is, and I've read all, all but two of David Icke's books. Uh -huh. The way that David Icke presents information is in, a, in, in my, this is my opinion, it's in a, in a, What's the word I'm looking for? It's in a very objective way, most of it. Mm -hmm. It's a way that is not coming from a place of ego. It's not coming from a place of I'm better than you. It's not coming from a place of I'm more important than you, which are clearly things that David Wilcock in his talks expresses to his own audience. You should have taken the bunny slope. <laughs> this is the black diamond. And I'm not, I'm not just picking on this guy. I'm just saying... The difference between a David Wilcock and a David Icke is that I think people like David Icke sincerely try to remove ego from the equation, and people like David Wilcock have done the opposite. They've welcomed as much ego into the equation as possible, and whether or not they, they could share the same information, the way that it's presented does a tremendous amount of damage just on that basis alone, I think, to this kind of content because I, I don't really want to... Uh, I don't want to be associated. I'm sure a lot of you don't want to be associated with everything we've talked about tonight where people believe that we're crazy because others make up stories about UFOs. I mean, it's just like with the Jesse Smollett case in the news. The guy faked a hate crime. So now when there really is a hate crime, it's like the boy who cried wolf. The people that really are victims of, let's say, a hate crime, they're done a great injustice by someone who wrote a racist letter to to a network, it didn't get the attention that he wanted, so he staged a racist attack on him pa by paying two Nigerian guys to attack him. It does a disservice to people who actually are victims of hate crimes. The same thing with the Me Too movement and any other similar situation. It does a tremendous disservice to people who actually have done real research, have had a real experience, as opposed to people that just make it up and try to make a little bit of money and grow their popularity. That's how I see it. Right. And so just to be clear, uh, my show isn't called Lighting the Proof. All right. So the topic tonight is about discerning the truth. And that means there are times when we get to a certain thing about a subject where we don't know. And what I'm trying to say is, is that's okay. Because I got a message over on over there on Spreaker that says, like, what about your show? You know, I thought, you, well, I don't, I've never claimed to, to give you proof. I've only talked about my experiences and talked to other people about their experiences. But there are times that I think that things are so damn obvious what's going on that it's almost a crime to sit back. Like, for example, I'll give you another example. Another thing that Ryan talks about that is becoming okay now but back in the day, he used to get kicked off networks for talking about it. Let me explain to you how sick this is, right? Uh, so Ryan like, likes to stand up for children, you know, people that can't defend themselves, victims of really bad things like sexual abuse and stuff like that. And he was told not to talk about it. Don't talk about those things. 
So here's a guy coming out trying to protect people that need protection like children. We'll leave the gullible. We'll push the gullible to the side for the moment. And let's just talk about children because they are gullible. They're fragile and they're innocent and they need people to look out for them. And he never stopped talking about it. And when that's something I really respected. And all of a sudden now it's all over the news, right? It's all over the news. It's okay to run commercials about pedophiles and expose them and everything. But if I think back not too long ago, it was a subject that we really couldn't talk about. Every now and then it would just come out, but they really didn't get deep about it. But now it's okay. And so what's going to happen, whether you guys really like it or not, this is what's going to happen. People that are out to steal from you in this community are going to get exposed as well. And you can either go with them or you can, you know, open yourself up to the new revolution of truth seekers. I'm really glad that you brought that up, Joe, because I I think that's a really good way to bring us down from that clip that we played. Because within the so-called quote-unquote industry, it, it is very, very popular now to talk about pedophilia and it wasn't i just heard a commercial i I just heard a commercial two hours ago where they talked to a commercial like a network commercial on a networked radio show and i won't name any names that said some of the things that were really sick about what these guys are doing and the people that protect them which months ago you used to get crap for talking about From the very first day I started radio about eight, nine years ago, yeah, I got crap about it from the very first day. And I didn't have any intention except to talk about it, and I wondered why people don't like when I talk about it. I felt really weird. You can talk about anything, but don't don't talk about that. You can eat from any tree in the garden except for that tree. Well, what do you want to do? You want to go eat from that tree. What do you want to do? I I want to talk about what you tell me I can't talk about. You're not giving me a good reason why. You're just saying don't talk about it. So I, I, I want to talk about it. And, and in talking about it, yeah, I've been removed from several networks because of that. And so, another thing a lot of people don't know that I'll go ahead and say is there are other people out here that have good messages, a spiritual messages to deliver. They want to talk about their experiences with interdimensional beings, with out-of-body experiences, and all of these different things. And they are foreshadowed by this kind of stuff by the club that's trying to tell you that we're all Luciferians, that the cabal is out to get you, and yada, yada, yada. And the real people that have decent information are getting, they're getting buried in the shadow. People well, I know personally that have really good information, that have spent their lives trying to figure this stuff. And I'm talking about spiritualists all the way to people that study archaeology. And it also gives other people a bad name that, that end up going to these conferences like John Anthony West used to go there, Robert Schock, Laird Scranton, people we know that are real truth seekers. Robert Schock's a very cool guy. They get buried in these shadows. So yep. if you don't want to stand up for this stuff, that's fine. If you believe it, that's one thing. Well, we can't convince you. I'm not going to try to convince you, but I'm not going to. It's hard for me as well as nice of a guy as you all think I am, it's very hard for me as well to sit around and watch all this happen. After a while, it gets pretty old. I'd like to give you an example, Joe, of something. I, I've, since the beginning of radio, and this isn't about me, but I just want to tell a very quick personal story. I've saved every single article I've ever printed, clipped, taped, folded, wadded into a ball, and unfolded later, realizing I needed it. I've saved everything. I have a giant crate of news articles. I have have most of it. It's, it's organized for you know different files, different events. I have several Manila folders full of stories, and they are newspaper stories from the physical newspaper to articles I've printed off of line, uh, off of online websites, newspapers, magazines, things like that. I, I, if I put them on my desk, I have one here now. The thing is like almost an inch thick, and that's just one folder from the last couple of years. I have others that are about as thick from the years before that. If I put all of it together, I might literally have close to a foot tall, 12 inches tall, just of news stories in the mainstream press about things such as child abuse, child rape, child trafficking, 
human trafficking, sexual abuse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I sit here and I've detailed it on my show for as long as I've been on. There are other people like, yeah, David Icke has talked about it for a very, very long time. Alex Jones has also talked about it for a very long time. Some people talk about it in different ways than others, but it's documented even in the mainstream. A very famous case came out from the Boston Globe that exposed the network in Boston, showed that it were, we're, we're talking priests in the triple digits abusing kids. The, the guy that was essentially at the head of that at the diocese, he got promoted to the Vatican after that. And he made a movie about it called Spotlight that was based on a true story. This has been documented for a very long time. Unfortunately now, I can sit here with my stack of news articles that just grows by the day for that subject only. It goes way beyond politics, way beyond religion. It's not about Catholicism. There's a story in the news just the last, yeah. I think, about 10 days about the Baptist church and 700 kids being molested by volunteers of the church along with other people that work there. So the point is, this is very well documented, and it gets very little attention. What's dangerous and what's very, very suspicious is when it becomes popular overnight and we hear people talking about things like Pizzagate. Then yeah. you know you then you have a psyop. You know you have a psyop. You know that people are taking something way out of context and then and then Pizzagate becomes popular. People like Wilcock promote Pizzagate, they spread it all over the place, and then when you can look at Pizzagate and you say, wait a minute, this is just totally BS. Then it discredits this giant one-foot stack of news articles I have here over the last eight years I've done radio, and that doesn't account for the hundreds online that I never printed out. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you know, I used to, I've worked with some radio people before uh, that would tell me, don't talk about, they would tell me to, don't talk about that stuff. You know, people don't want to think about those types of things. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I would say, they got kids, right? You got kids? Uh, don't you need to know like this stuff is going on and don't you care about, don't you at least care about other people's kids? Don't you care about children? Of course I do, Joe, but it's not, people don't want to talk. They want to talk about ghosts and they want to talk about aliens. And I'm like, look, man, I get that, but this stuff's getting pretty heavy and it's getting pretty local. And it's always in my opinion. And I told you this from the first time I met you, you know, that it's our responsibility as broadcasters. And I'm not the only one that thinks this. I mean, I've been coached this way by coaches in broadcasting that it is our responsibility whenever we think something is unsafe or bad to get the news out, right? It's not for effect. It's not to entertain you. I mean, if I wanted to talk to you about entertainment I, all the time, we could do that. But these things have to get out because who else is going to speak up for them, right? Who else yep. is going to speak up for the children? Ryan, you know, and that's something else. Like, I've got a kid. Well, you've most of you that are listening, you got kids, man. And it doesn't matter to you. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to feel. You, I don't like the feelings it makes me feel. Until it happens to your kid, then you're all up in arms about it. So the best thing to do is like, let's bury these assholes, right? And the people that protect them, which is another problem that we have right now, is that there are people out there that protect them they make excuses for them i've even heard things where they say oh it's some type of uh mental issue that they can get help no 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 no. if you're harboring these people or you're making excuses for these people or you're protecting them doing anything other than calling your law office or the police i mean to say and reporting them then you're just as bad sorry to tell you i don't care yeah, I mean, if they're your relative or who they are this goes way beyond it. It's it's so sanitized in news. You know, you listen to people talk about Pizzagate and it's usually very vague or it's like, oh, Hillary Clinton did this and John Podesta did this. And that's kind of what I interpreted from reading backwards this email while I hopped on one foot and I kind of think I deciphered the code. I'm like, well, hold on a second. I don't need to decipher no code. I, I've got a stack of news articles here from the mainstream press, New York Times, CNN all over the place, all over the world, and I've just got story after story after story where it's a lot more than just a very vague comment. It's cardinals, it's bishops, it's priests, it's volunteers at the church, people in government, it's law enforcement officers, rabbis in New York, stories all the time pouring out about child trafficking networks, child porn networks, human trafficking networks, drug running, all of this centered around kids, the selling of babies. I mean, uh, what, what is it? God was a that thing. 
When that thing unraveled, man, it's still unraveling right now. And it's, that's the it's same, crazy. That's the same network, Joe. I'm glad you brought that up. That's the same network Mother Teresa's organization right now is being investigated in India for trafficking infants. It's the same story on every continent, in every country, in every city, in every kind of church, in every level of government. This is absolutely a conspiracy. It's absolutely a, 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 a very widespread international global network of people that are involved in things that are far worse than the sanitized language of things like Pizzagate. Ooh, it's child abuse. No, 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 no. It's not child abuse because when you have people, I've said, I've seen stories in the last couple of years, people in uh, Canada, people in the United States who have been arrested because they fed their kids vegetables and they consider that child abuse in some places. Child abuse if you feed your kid a vegetable and they don't like it and you consider that child abuse, how can you compare that to a child being brutally raped and call the brutal rape of a child child abuse? That's not child abuse. That's rape. And that's even a sanitized version of what actually happened. A great example of this would be the Boise, Idaho priest from, I believe it was St. Mary's, a local priest. This guy didn't rape anybody so far as we know. He had planned and he had conspired to kidnap a boy and to kill him as part of a vacation. That's literally what the guy was doing. He was going to go on vacation in South America, I think it was, kidnap a boy and kill him for fun. That's what a priest does on holiday. And when the police found this guy, finally, they went to arrest him. They found him in his underwear watching child porn. He's a, he, he, he just needs to be taken out. Sorry. Yeah, That's just what they, I think. You got you to take the trash out. Yeah, man. Just take them Dude, this out, guy, right? This guy had tens of thousands. I'm going to ask you this question, Joe. Tens of thousands of images and videos of they. This is the word. This is the wording that was used in the local, and there were very few national stories, but in the local newspapers in Boise, Idaho, they found images and videos of infants, toddlers, and children being choked, drowned, raped, tortured, and beaten. Now, I'm not an expert on the census. I don't know the exact number of people in this country or how many people are born every, every second or every minute. I don't think anybody knows that exactly. We have a general estimate of how many people are in the country at, at a given time based on the census. But I would like to know where tens of thousands of infants and toddlers and children come from for snuff videos and for raping uh, videos that, that where children are being raped or they're I being I see what tortured. you're saying. So you want to know where the, where the, uh, where are they come? Where are these kids coming from? Right. Joe? Part yeah, of a network. I get it. I get what you're saying. Like it's not about the act that it's happening. I mean, obviously we know it's happening, but what you're trying to figure out is where the circuit is. Where's this underground movement happening? Because that's what really needs to be taken out. You know, in in part, yeah. I mean, in one level, it's just acknowledging, yeah, this is happening, and it's more than just the sanitized language of it's just child abuse. No, it's not child abuse. These are horrific things on a level that is just incomprehensible to me. It even short circuits my brain sometimes to imagine <clears throat> this is this is now in the mainstream news more and more. But on another level, you're right. It's about looking for the reasoning behind this. And my and, point is, is also that other people, what you'll hear is with a cherry on top, what the agenda is, it's reptilian overlords that are doing this kind of stuff. Well, that's great. Okay, I mean, it's great to talk about reptilians and all this stuff, but you're not doing the children any justice by saying that. You know, it's you You have no proof is a, hard, a harsh word in this community, too. Have you figured that out? You figured that out yet, Ryan? Just saying the word proof offends people in this community. And, and that's because of the I want to believe. We want to believe so bad we are offended that anybody would suggest that what we want to believe in might be a little bit different than what we think it is. Not me. I want proof. But I, I like evidence, to too. Evidence is fine. Like when I was, you know, when we had Thomas Campbell on and we talked about uh, the out-of-body experience, even when I brought up proof to him and he's a scientist, he's like, you know, I'm not doing this for proof. I'm doing this to bring up evidence. The more evidence I can show, the better. Right? And I've always dug that point of view. Because if you say the word proof, then people are like, well, I think they get offended by it because they think, well, you want me to prove my paranormal experience or that this is happening to me or this or that. Well, no, 
But as a truth seeker, it's nice to have it. Like it's nice to have physical proof. That's all we're saying. And anybody can claim something. I can claim that I'm a, a whistleblower that worked for the CDC and I know that vaccines are dangerous. I can claim that I worked on the secret space program. Does that mean that I actually did? No, you have to use discernment, good judgment to make that determination. And if you use your good judgment to make the determination that somebody is not telling the truth, then you're not obligated because of your belief and whatever it is that you want to believe to believe that person. You can say, well, I believe in a secret space program and I'll raise my hand to that personally. Absolutely. That doesn't mean that I believe Corey good. And that's kind of like the same thing I told you about the shirt that I wore where someone said Hillary for prison. Oh, my God. You know, George Bush did bad things, too. Trump's not a good guy. And I said, yeah, I agree. And they couldn't comprehend it. It's that polarization. I don't have to believe Corey good, but I still believe in the secret space program. You know, I was talking to Samaya O'Grady about this earlier today on Suzanne's show. um, Did I really believe and I don't have a lot of evidence or proof, but I believe that the day that ever since Kennedy was assassinated, whatever you want to call it, you can call it a cabal. I like to, I like to think that it's just rich, greedy, sick individuals uh, inside the government, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> the secret space program was involved the military industrial complex. Regardless, we all know, and this is one of my biggest points from our experience that we were at the pinnacle if you've ever heard like anybody talk about this stuff that lived there in those times that we were at the pinnacle of becoming something really great, really getting down to some truth and really about to evolve into something better. And then when he got assassinated, I really believe that there hasn't been any single president since then that I've trusted. Not that I was even alive, but just based on my research that it came close to it. And I think ever since then, there has been some type of crazy dark agenda behind things. I don't think, I don't know if it's rep, I just doubt it's reptilians, okay? But it could just be a bunch of greedy, crazy humans. Psychopaths. Yeah. I that's, think that's, that's what really, it could be. That's a really important word to define the psychopath, the person that doesn't have the ability to empathize with others. There's not necessarily a reasoning for what they do, or at least it's a reasoning that we can't understand because we are moral individuals. We don't want to hurt others. And that's unfortunately preyed upon by psychopaths and by people that look to exploit others. Our good will, our good intention, it's played on. We wouldn't do something bad to a child, so I don't think other people would do it, especially not a man of God. Why would they do something to a child? They're supposed to be there to help us and to protect us. I, I don't think other people are involved in covering this up. Or not even that. Why would they lie to us about spiritual things? Why would they lie to us? Yeah, abs- and you can ask that question about anything. Yeah, why, why, why? It's not a matter of what you would do. It's a matter of what people are already doing, regardless if you do it or not. I mean, that's something that is really, really empowering once you recognize that then you can kind of move past that that speed bump i want to give you an example here of something joe this is an article i pulled out of a newspaper the buffalo news but this is a a a a, a news story out of new york state it's a national news story as well in the state of new york they've passed the child victims act have you heard of this oh god no yeah i can already tell it's probably a something a sympathizing type thing which really pisses me off well in a way it is in a way it's not the catholic church has paid out according to this article 200 million dollars i just want you to think of this for a second 200 million dollars not because a handful of priests were convicted but because a handful of priests were accused of molesting children 249 Catholic priests in New York State from Buffalo, Albany, Brooklyn, Ogdensburg, Rochester, and Syracuse. Just 249 priests. The church has paid out $200 million for accusations. 
Okay, what are they so paying for, though? They're paying to keep people quiet because the only thing you're going to get out of the church is a few dollars, and a lawyer is going to collect a percentage of that. And then if you want to take it further... Uh, I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, the church's legal team will absolutely bury you. So the lawyer says, well, if we take a cut of this, then you know at least we'll get something. I'll get paid, you get some money, and we move on. So this new Child Victims Act, it literally allows for this scenario to play out. It doesn't open up an investigation into the church. It doesn't force the church to open its records or get rid of pedophile priests. It doesn't do anything to solve the problem or even look at the the, the foundation of the problem. All that it does is opens the window for the statute of limitations on certain cases. It allows for people that are up to 50 five years old, as opposed to the previous law of, of, I think it was 23 years old, to come forward and say, I was abused, molested, raped, whatever. And you have a certain window because of this Child Victims Act to do that and go get a lawyer and collect a little bit of money. You know what that tells us? That tells us that although it seems really positive on the surface, this is the epitome of the negativity we were talking about earlier. This doesn't help people because What ends up happening here is the church has so much money, $200 million, to throw at victims to keep their mouths shut over accusations, and with a handful of court cases and I'm sure a couple of class action lawsuits, the church will pay out a couple hundred million more, a couple billion maybe throughout the United States alone. The lawyers take their 30 or 40 percent cut. The children who are brutally scarred for life and even young adults and even some people that are older who have been raped or molested as adults, these people get a few dollars, and that's supposed to make it all right. What it actually does is it legalizes rape, it legalizes child abuse, it legalizes all of the horrible things that these people do to children and to young adults and to adults. It legalizes all of those horrible things because it says if you have enough money— To pay a lawyer and to pay a child and to pay a family off, you can rape them all you want. It doesn't address the root core of this problem. It's sick. It's disgusting. It's twisted. It's perverted. It's depraved. It's diabolic. And, you know, I I, I put a a clip, and this is a different situation where the system gets is totally screwed up, which if we're talking about discerning truth, we need to realize our system is totally screwed up on Facebook of a murder that happened back in, did you see that uh, back in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, where this bell bonds lady just totally murdered this guy. You know, she said, you know, I'm going to handcuff you. And he's like, well, you know, he's just sitting here. He said, well, there's no point in handcuffing me, you know? And then she tries to grab him. He's like, no, you know, I'm just going to leave. You know, uh, she didn't call the cops. She doesn't have the right to put him in handcuffs. And he's totally trying to get away from her, right? He, he didn't attack her, didn't do anything, never came at her. So everybody that's seen it on the Facebook page said it's murder, right? She goes to the desk and pulls out a gun, shoots the guy, and he he's dead, right? And she does it in front of her son, which scarred him for life, too. And he's like, Mom, you just, you know, shot this guy. Well, you know, I'm going to call 911. That'll make everything all right. The point of the story is, is that she pulls out a wad of money, gets a lawyer, the lawyer takes it to court and the guy, she gets off with murdering this guy because she had a lawyer that could switch up stuff in the case and say, well, you know, she wasn't trying to murder the guy. She was trying to impale him because she feared for her life. And the jury even got locked on this because the lawyer was so good at making his point. But what really happened is the woman got away with cold blooded murder and to this day is walking around free. And that's just a small example of what's going on. So if that happens in legal communities when it comes to like murder and rape and all these other things, what do you think that type of, uh, I guess you could say deception and money and money shadowing and all of this stuff, what do you think that that type of stuff does to our community? Right? Because we're not, we're, we like to put ourselves away from all of the things that are happening in the real world and talk about all of the fantastic stuff like aliens and out of body experiences and which is cool but we're also easily very easily 
manipulated. And I think that's what we need to get past. We need to become a strong community when it comes to truth. And you're getting a lot of different messages from people saying, well, all this infighting is bad. But no, 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 no. Infighting isn't always bad. Sometimes it's a birthing process into a new era of truth seekers. A new era of people that aren't going to put up with bullcrap anymore. We're just not. And if it makes you uncomfortable, I'm sorry. Very well said, Joe. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. You can call it infighting, you can call it negativity. It's not infighting, it's not negativity. It's looking at the basis for what someone says. If they're making an outrageous claim, relatively speaking, addressing it for what it is, asking for proof, the burden of proof is on the individual, and when they become reluctant to talk to you, when they hide, when they don't say anything, or when they attack you, that's kind of suspicious, don't you think? As opposed to someone who says, this happened, Okay, can you prove it to me? No. Sure. Yes or no, right? <laughs> right. Like, no, I can't, but maybe I can. Yeah, and you know what? If it's, a, if it's a personal story, I've had so many weird experiences, and I've told you some of these things, and there are things that others have experienced. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced some of the exact same things I've experienced when I was a kid. Very, very rarely do I talk about them, but when I do... I'm sure that there are a lot of people that listen to my show, and there, I know there are people in my life who are kind of skeptical about what I've experienced. And in those cases, I don't really care if you believe it or not. I know that I experienced something. I'm open to it being different than what I initially thought that it was, but I still know that I experienced it, or at least I have a memory of that experience. I don't want you to necessarily believe it, but if I sit here and tell you, Look, the Child Victims Act in New York is now a thing where basically the church can pay people to rape them, or if they, can, or if they rape them, they can just basically pay them off, and it's legal to rape now. You say, well, no, that you get into this legal argument. Well, it's not what the law actually allows. It's actually a really good thing because, see, it allows for people that have been raped to get a lawyer and get some money from the church. That's really all they're going to get. Well, that's just like the argument people say, well, it's just the way the world is. Well, dude, it's the way the world is because nobody does what is right in a collective People do what's right individually on occasion if other people are looking, and a few people do what's right when nobody's looking. You know, we used to, Ryan. You know that? Yes, we used to. We did. It used to be a much more moral society in the United States in particular. It's not like that anymore, is it, Joe? Do you ever think that when Kennedy got shot that it put the fear, like like subconscious fear, into people to where they don't stand up and do movements anymore, where they don't? march like that we used to march the young people all of the people that they used to man they were talking about chemtrails back then but they were being heard and they all love kennedy and kennedy was being heard but when that shot rang out man i feel like something died in all of us and we got to get that back somehow look what happened throughout the 60s look at look at the the cia and their involvement in sex drugs and rock and roll look at the work of people like Mark Devlin or Dave McGowan, the influence in the music industry. Look at how just in general music has changed, not in a really positive way or a progressive way. It's not even music anymore. Whether it's hip-hop, rap, pop, rock, most of the music now is this distorted, auto-tuned Studio machine. music. Yeah. yeah, it's programming. It's not even art. And all of that comes from that time period where society was fundamentally shaped intentionally and changed in a way that probably has not ever been done before in the past. I mean, society has been, in terms of like social engineering throughout history, every civilization in the history of the world has attempted some version of that. But in terms of using popular culture and using drugs and using uh, intelligence agencies and using now with the uh, massive amount of information that's gathered through your media, your social media and your your phones and tablets and computers, there's already a digital version of you that exists in a computer, and the people that have the access to that information can look at it, and and they know you better than you know you. They know me better than I know me, and I hardly use this stuff except for the radio. And if you think money's not controlling people, think about this message real quick. Well, you know, we need to be in a positive state of mind and, and quit the infighting and stuff. Yeah, we do need to be in a positive state of mind, and we do need to quit the infighting But we need to weed out stuff. But what you need to, and this goes back to the very beginning of the show, when you hear a message, even the message I'm giving you right now, 
Ask yourself what the agenda is. Why do people want to stop us from infighting and figuring out what the truth is? Why do people want to stop us from bringing up subjects that are touchy? Why? When you, when it bothers you on the inside, you listening right now, it bothers you. Even you put it out of your mind sometimes because you don't want to think about it. But the reason why these guys are saying it is because they're trying to protect their income and their way of life. They don't care about the children. They don't really care about the truth. And some of them don't even care about UFOs and aliens. I got to be honest with you. What they're trying to protect is their way of life, the income they've been getting from you this whole time, and the carefree attitude about everything. So if we can just push it out and push it away, we don't have to worry about it. And they keep getting those checks and their way of life stays the way it is. But birthing pains doesn't work like that. Revolutions don't work like that. Growth does not happen when you're comfortable. It's time to get uncomfortable. See what you're doing to me, Ryan? I don't even do shows like this, man. You got me all riled up, brother. I love it. I love it, too. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying your commentary tonight, Joe. It's very spot on. I think it's better than what I'm trying to explain. Well, I mean... In a, in a way, we all have issues we're trying to work out, you know, whether it's health, whether it's psychology, spiritually, and that's fine. That's why a lot of people listen. But there's certain things as far as I think as the truth community goes that we just can't, we can't ignore anymore. And we've got to listen to every message that comes to us, whether it's a podcast, a video, a YouTube video, uh, a live radio show like this one. Why, you know, what is the message? Number one, what is the agenda behind the message? Are they just trying to do this for effect? It's kind of like, for example, Black Sabbath. I told you about this. They had a band called Earth that went nowhere. Imagine that. Ozzy Osbourne, all of those guys, they were going nowhere until they changed their message. Now, they changed their message to Black Sabbath and started doing dark music and all of this stuff because they knew the effect of it. The agenda was to change the effect so that they could get a bigger and larger audience, and they've we all know we've watched the Osbournes, the stuff that man's had to do to protect his way of life. And here lately he's been on his deathbed while people are wanting him to tour still. And that's just a small example. Like, but you see what I'm saying? It's all about cause and effect, which is an old hermetic principle taught to you in mystery schools that you're afraid of. It's one of the seven hermetic principles, cause and effect as above, so below law of correspondence we've blew through we've blew past two breaks here uh, you know i wonder why uh, i i wonder why I, I think this is so important and maybe it's my own hangups too because i was i don't know if you ever watched that 70s show have you ever seen that show it's a great show yeah i've That's seen a, it i don't remember it very well but i've seen it before my dad was like red foreman never wrong always calling me a dumbass you know He's ne- even when he was wrong, he wouldn't admit he was wrong. So I grew up around this mentality where it's ask dad, he knows. Dad knows what's right, this and that. But when you get older, and we all go through this, we realize our parents are just as full of crap as we are. And then things get a little scary because you, you, you don't know what's left and right, and you don't know where to go anymore. And so you start reaching out for context you start reaching out for books radio shows videos all of this stuff because you're trying to find out the truth and when you go back to people that were in your previous life before you realize everybody was full of crap like your parents and your aunts and uncles and stuff they don't want to hear it because they're not going to change so you're stuck in this whirlwind of trying to please people when deep down inside you don't want to please people you just want to know what the truth is and that's a battle we all got to work out for ourselves but I can promise you that when I have people on this show, sometimes I'm not here to find out if there's proof of what they're going through. I'll ask enough questions to figure out if they really had this experience. But then there's other times when we really got to make a stand in this community, man. Aren't you guys tired of it? Like, you got to be tired of the same stuff. Day in, day out, same stuff. Day in, never getting any answers. So day in. And it's, it's not because we're never going to know, like a lot of you think. It's because we are sucked into protecting these people's way of life. That's, that's just what I think. 
once again, I, I agree entirely with you, Joe. You're very, very spot on tonight, like I said. We are sucked into protecting those people's way of life. And in the process, we're having the life drained out of us. And a lot of the things that we're so interested in, the, 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 the good will and the naivety, the, I'd say a positive naivety, it's not negative necessarily to be naive, but the, the neutral naivety of us to being like children, being interested in, in space and exploring the universe and monsters and the paranormal and UFOs and all of these spooky, interesting things. If you really, truly are interested in those kinds of things beyond the entertainment value, you cannot believe, it's an obvious, obvious overstatement, you cannot believe what someone says just because they say it because they have a giant following. It's okay to ask that person for proof. When people get very upset when you ask for proof, you know that there's probably something wrong. That's a big red flag. That's just kind of a little bit of what we've been discussing tonight. But I think a really good way to sort of wind the show down is to just look at the way that we as individuals react to things. I, I'm no different than you are, and this is just my personal opinion from my, 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 um, my point of view. Not every single person is going to play every single position. We can use sports as an analogy. Whether it's basketball or hockey or football, you have different players that play different positions. In the radio world, you have a host, you have a producer, you have a tech guy, you have a board operator, you have a manager... Different people that play yeah. different positions. If you're lucky, right? <laughs> if you're lucky. If not, you're, then you do all of those things like Joe does and like I do. <laughs> we're, we're all of the different different people. We wear all the different hats. Yeah. So if, if you are to look at it from a sports analogy, no, no sports team, whether, let's just use the Super Bowl because more people are probably aware of that than like the NBA Finals or NHL Stanley Cup. Whether or not you like the Patriots, it doesn't really matter. That's not the point of this this example. The Patriots or any team that wins the Super Bowl, they don't win the Super Bowl because one person went onto the field and played against the other team in its entirety. They won because they played as a team against the opposition. They won because they generally and usually, though there are some really bad calls and things like that, they played better than the other team. They played better collectively than the other team. And so if we can recognize that some of us are going to play different positions, some of us are radio hosts, some of us are just researchers. I mean, some of the stuff, Joe, people send me, they're not interested in talking on air, they're not interested in being a radio host, they're not interested in having their name used, but they send me stuff, I'm like, I had absolutely no idea about that. And I talk about it on the show. I'll give you two quick examples. I had a listener, uh, Mick Schwartz, he sent me some stuff about the Jesse Smollett case that I had not seen. Some stuff about how there was just an anti-lynching law passed in the wake of this supposed lynching, which turned out to be fake. And I had not seen that. And I thought, damn, that's really, really interesting. That should be talked about. So I talked about it on last night's show for a few minutes, and I gave him credit for that. I had a guy that called into Ground Zero when Clyde and I did the Super Bowl show, and he said, you know, the Super Bowl is kind of like a bowl, like a cauldron. And these lanterns that were lifted during the halftime performance, they're kind of like souls. He said, maybe it's kind of like spirit cooking. I said, that's a really great point, because in spirit cooking, you've got semen, which is the life seed, the seed of life. You've got blood, which is the life force. You've got milk, which is the nurturing substance. And as I said that, Clyde said, yep, and milk is in bulk, and in bulk is usually the time of the year where the Super Bowl is placed. It's a it's a magical ritual. And so all of that tied together, and I, I used that guy's comments and gave him credit when I did my Super Bowl show. So everybody plays a different part, and nobody's superior to anybody else. But when people start saying, I'm better, it's because of my powerful brain that I've been able to decode the cabal symbolism in real time, something you can't see, only I can see. It's like, are you kidding me? Is this a joke? Are, are, are you are you? Is this supposed to be funny? It's not. It's 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 insulting. It's it's ripping people off. It's a scam. That should be a huge red flag. We all wow. have the ability to make these decisions for ourselves and what we believe. Sure, we have an ability to discern what is right, what is wrong, but we also have an ability 
to take a step back in every single case, no matter what we think about it, and just take a break sometimes and look at it after we've taken a break, and maybe we'll see it from a different point of view. Yeah, I, you know, even in this even in this community, the few conferences that I've been to, yes, okay, I'm going to admit this, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but there are some people out there that are super gullible, right? Everything's a UFO, everything's a spiritual attack, yada, yada, yada. But I don't really, you know, I don't want to spend hours in that battle convincing them that they're making all this stuff up in their head, right? Because that's their own deal. But my point is, is for the most part, most of you that I've met personally or have talked to personally, you're not stupid. Most of you are pretty intelligent. Most of you are pretty good people. And you, most of you really want to know the truth instead of validating your own beliefs. That's been my experience with this community. So I hope that, well, I don't want to even say I hope. I'm glad to see that because to me it feels like that the real truth seekers are starting to win if we continue to look at the cause and effect of every message that is delivered to us if we can see through stuff and that's what the word occult means it's being able to look through things to see what's hidden behind the real message even doubly so like manly p hall said it's not some big scary evil thing it has been a patsy for big scary evil monsters and cabals and stuff and luciferians but it's not really the truth the truth is is until you yourself go out and study all these things in the name of truth seeking and curiosity you're really not going to know you're just going to have to take somebody's word for it and most of you in my experience are done with that i hope we are anyways i think we i think we're making progress ryan because you remember back in the day when you came on to this network and, you know, I had some people that would come on and say, well, you know, Ryan offended me. Ryan offended this and offended that. I even talked to my partner, Eric, about it. And we had some discussions and I said, look, I don't I don't think you're doing anything really good in this community as far as truth seeking goes without offending people. And a matter of fact, there is an episode on this show, Lighting the Void, where there was a man named John Anthony West that said, good, I hope I offend him. Some people need to be offended so they'll wake up. And he called this place dumb Ephistan. I can't say the word, but that's what he called it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. If you go back and listen to it, I couldn't edit those words out, but I wouldn't because it was him, you know. But, yeah, sometimes we need to be offended. We all do. So right on. More power to you, Ryan. That helps to shake us out of the apathy and the lethargy, just accepting things the way that they are. You know, that's that's how the status quo is formed anyway. That's how the status quo is formed in ufology. Well, that's just the way things are. These are just the experts, and these are just the, the cases that we need to talk about. Like, yeah, you know what? In ufology, we can still talk about Roswell, but it's at this point, it's like, dude, there are so many other cases that are even more prominent and, 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 and powerful in scope of evidence than Roswell. And it's like they're totally ignored because we just want to relive some some historical event. It's, it's the same way with a lot of things. We just want to relive the, the, the days of Bob Lazar. We want to relive the days of Art Bell. Fine, no issue with that. But if that's all we're focusing on, that's still where we're getting our evidence. We're telling the same story over and over and over and over and over and over and over again for 50 or 60, 70, 80, 100 years. We got to move on and address other things because there are other things happening and a lot of them are even more significant or as significant as those, as those past events. If we stagnate, if we stop, if we, we prevent ourselves from moving forward, thinking that we're progressing forward by holding on to these past pieces of evidence as the only proof, we're going to miss a lot of other stuff that could really, really, really open the field and open the conversation to being able to find that elusive proof. And that's why it's just amazing to me why anybody would make up, unless they were intentionally trying to distort reality, why anybody would make up stories about cabals and make up stories about ufo sightings and make up stories about paranormal experiences like wh why make it up if you really really are trying to prove it to somebody there's no reason to make it up because there's a tremendous amount of evidence that you can put forward 
as proof already. Why do we need to make things up to make it seem more important or more powerful than it is? Whatever we call the truth, that's already really powerful. We don't need to make something up. We don't need to present fiction as fact. It's not more powerful. And if it does seem more powerful, it might draw a few extra people in. The average person isn't going to stay very long, and it's going to be easily discredited when that average person recognizes this is just absolutely nonsense. And that might turn them off from the entire field of whatever the subject might be, and they'll become an ardent skeptic of that information because they think that it's just purely fantasy. And that, unfortunately, is what a lot of... That's what happens. Yes, that's what happens. That's what a lot of disinfo agents, we say disinfo agents, some people do it willingly, willingly, some people do it just because that's the part they're playing, I guess. And, and, and when we have a look at information, we just need to be able to recognize as individuals, I, I have to do it too, there are more than a handful of ways to look at something. And if you really want quote-unquote proof, look at real information as opposed to things that are more speculative based on claims, based on vague, obscure statements like, We've got a cabal and we've got secret tribunals and they're taking place at these certain locations. Words like certain and supposed and possibly and maybe. That isn't proof of anything. That's somebody telling you a story based on a story that somebody else told them based on the story somebody else told them. Are there there real whistleblowers? Are there people like Bill Binney? People like Edward Snowden? Yeah, there absolutely are. I mean, even people like Jessica Lynch, she basically blew the lid off of that propaganda that the U.S. media was trying to spin about how she was a hero. She said, I'm not a hero. I didn't fire my gun. My gun jammed. I was knocked unconscious. I didn't do anything. Don't make me a hero. And that story was dropped. Same thing with with the Jesse Smollett case. Just this is what happened. This is reality. Dude, it's not reality. It's not reality. When you take a step back from it, it's really obvious what's happening. Everybody's trying to promote their own little cult. And those of us who recognize that, we can all sit together, we can have a conversation, and we can disagree. It's good to disagree. Not to mention we can really explore the real paranormal, the few and far between things that happen, the real UFOs, the real secret space program, you know, the real out-of-body experiences, the shadow figures that both Ryan and I have talked about because we understand discernment. We can really have a discussion and really try to get as close to it as we can. It may not, you know, I mean, it's entertaining to talk about these things, but I promise you, I'm never, I will make this promise that I'm never going to push somebody else's agenda just because they're a guest on my show and hopes to make a bunch of money. That's never happened here. It will never happen here, but I will hear them out. And it's okay if I say, Hey, do you have any evidence on this that, you know, that you met this thing or you, you have this thing that happened it's okay if they say no. Matter of fact, it's better. Like, no, I can't prove it to you. But I'm telling you, this is what happened. You don't mm-hmm. have to believe it, but this is what happened to me. That's that's a good start just right there. Yes, it is. And I, I want to give you a really quick example of something. I know we're almost at the top of the hour. I, I, I hear a lot that you have people come out and they're big names and they make a lot of money. They're, they sell books, they're on TV, all totally fine. I, I don't care about any of that. It's not a jealousy thing. It's just an observation I'm going to make here. And they say they have no money, they're poor, they're broke. I know for a fact they're not poor, they're not broke. They make millions of dollars a year. Your definition of broke and poor is totally relative. And our definition of broke and poor is totally relative. I don't <laughs> yeah, know what your sure. definition is. Dude, Joe, Joe I know you and I I know myself here, we basically live in shacks in comparison with someone like David Wilcock who says he has no money. I'd like to point something out. If the cabal is really so powerful, if the cabal is really so omnipresent, then why can't the cabal, much like they did to Alex Jones, whatever that cabal might be, shut him off of Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and just totally purge him from the Internet and threaten to put him in jail, why doesn't the cabal do that to David Wilcock? Why can't the cabal pull down his PayPal page? They did it to Alex Jones. And oh, if David, yeah. Wilcock's, David Wilcock's telling the truth and the cabal's really after him. He even said on Jimmy Church that the cabal promised that they would replace Alex Jones with him. 
He said that. So if that's the case and they go after Alex Jones and they're so aware of David, David Wilcock, why can't they pull his PayPal page down? If this guy's so horribly broke and he has no money, I don't care what he does with his money, but you can't say you're broke when you have TV deals and you have book deals and you have conference deals and you're making $100,000 a month. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what kind of person spends that kind of money and what you spend it on. That's none of my business, but you're not broke. And if the cabal is that powerful, why can't they take down your PayPal page? Because they can do it with other people. Maybe you're working for the cabal, Ryan. There you go, Joe. That's a, that's probably what David would say if he was here with us this evening. Maybe, Maybe you're a shill. I'm working for the FBI. I'll admit it right now. I'm working <laughs> for the FBI. I'm not even in my uh, my apartment. They put me in a nice hotel to do this interview. They wanted to make sure it was very crystal clear, the connection, so I could I could spread some disinformation tonight on Lighting the Void. Well, you know what? We're going to continue to try to go down the road of lighting the void here and every now and then i do like to have ryan on uh to talk about these things and uh the funny thing is is you didn't really run off a third of my audience in fact if if you take a gander at talk stream live you'll see that uh, we're doing just fine and Excellent. Uh, by the way uh i love all of you guys over t- that use talk stream live uh and the paranormal radio app tune in our app the fringe fm app alexa whatever you're listening from thank you guys so much for listening the call in line, the call to listen line. Uh, what's your before we get out of here? I got just a couple of minutes. Your show's coming up next. What's it going to be about? Tonight we're talking about the colored snow. We're talking about the mysterious booms back in the news. We're talking about the northern magnetic pole of the Earth shifting and how that relates also to airports. And I think possibly the snow that is multicolored all over the world might be related to Morgellon. So I'm going to get into that tonight. And I also wanted to say, first of all, Joe, thank you for letting me come on the show tonight, having this conversation with me. My website is www.thesecretteachings.info. And it's really interesting. I want to say this very, very quickly. I literally, in the last two weeks, I've had somebody hack into my PayPal and steal money from me, hack into my Amazon account and steal my credit card information and steal money from me. And I have screenshots and proof of all of that. Other people claim they hacked and they've had their information taken and they can't provide any proof. They just make claims and the cabal's attacking them. I don't talk about these things because it seems insane, but at least that I know I can I can prove what I'm saying. I know other people have had very similar experiences. I just find it really, really, really funny. If someone asks me for proof, I can provide it in those types of cases. And I know that, Joe, when you say something, you can provide me proof, whether it's numbers on a network or it's numbers for my specific show. You provide me proof, and because of that, I respect you, and you have a lot of credibility with me because of that. Thank you. And all of you listening, all of the people that hang in there, that hung in there with us through the show, I have a lot of respect for you guys, too, because I think it's a new time. It's a new time for true seekers. We really are going through a birthing process of new true seekers at this moment. Just remember that, and remember there is always... uh, there's always an agenda behind each message. But, yeah, we do got to get out of here. Don't forget the show is produced by the Fringe FM and cannot be syndicated without written permission. Music was by Chrono, Kevin McLeod, Space Station. Guitar Man was by Bundy. Stay tuned for The Secret Teachings up next with Ryan Gable. See you guys tomorrow night. Good night. Sexum live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. Hang out with me, Joe Roop, on Lighting the Void at 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern. Ryan Gable expands your mind on the secret teachings at Midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern. We're bringing the heat every single night. Fire it up. The Fringe FM. Yahoy there. 
This is Gigi from Shift Habits. And holy shit, you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Hey, hey, don't you dare turn that stuff.